there, Wargamers, and welcome to our Age of Sigmar Battle Report for today. I am Luca from MediaWarGaming.com, joined by a returning guest, Thomas, over from Montreal, and we are playing 2,000 points of the new Blades of Corn against the Cruel Boys. We play and call it work. Mini Wargaming's Age of Sigmar Battle Report. Right, let's take a look at our Blades of Corn list first. I'll be running Gore Tide today, and I will not be getting my Triumph because uh, Nasty Thomas and his uh, Gruel Boys over there have less points than me. Now, disclaimer, only the second time I'm really playing this book, especially at a 2,000 point list, so I will be getting some things wrong probably here as I play uh, probably 10 different Sigma armies here for you, the viewer. I do it for you, don't forget. And uh, there's enough subtle changes from the second edition book uh, to make sure I will probably uh, misstep one of them. Now, let's take a look at the leader here. It will be the Slaughter Priest in a Warlord Battalion. He will be our general. We're going to be giving him the Glyph Feather Charm uh, from the Season of War as an Artifact of Power because I'll be running two Artifacts of Power. So I figured I'd give him a ward save to keep him alive, which will go in hand with our Grand Strategy, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, we are going to make him the High Priest of Corn. I like him as a spiritual leader for the army, uh, giving him two prayers. And we're going to be giving him Bronze Flesh as that exact prayer. Uh, now moving on with him in the Warlord Battalion, we'll have a Blood's Crater acting as a second in command. I love my BSB. And B, the second artifact will be the Crimson Plate on him, also giving him a 5 on board save. A little boring, but effective. And uh, I hope you understand why I gave him the Crimson Plate and the other guy the Glyph Feather Charm, because it narratively makes a little bit more sense there, I suspect. We're going to have a Realmscape Ritualist, I believe that is her name. That is the new priest available to the Blades of Corn. She's going to know Blood Sacrifice. Uh, and that's about it for her. She's got a crazy dagger, which I'm excited to use in the game. Just a built-in weapon. It's kind of nuts, actually. And then we'll have one of our random Blood Reaver units fill out this Warlord. Uh, speaking of Blood Reavers, I have five units of them. Uh, two of them are going to have Meat Ripper Axes, and three of them are going to have the uh, Reaver Blades. Uh, moving on to other characters, I'll be running a Galician Command Battalion with the Exalted Deathbringer. He felt fitting to run in this one. And uh, he's going to be bodyguarded by some Wrathmongers, because that's kind of what I had in the list that works for him. And uh, maybe that'll make sense. I kind of want to do the Blood Warriors, but the Wrathmongers probably make more sense, mechanically. And one last character is a Skull Grinder. Uh, just because uh, Korn's focus, this new book seems to be on the Gore Chosen, to a degree, on the mortal side. So I want to see how these Gore Chosen play in the game. And I just got to put them on the table and just roll dice and see if it works or not. And then the rest of the list. Well, I have a Galician Veteran Battalion as well. I got a whole lot of stuff going on in this army here. Uh, we're going to have two units of Blood Warriors. Uh, in this unit, and one will have the uh, Gore Fist, and then one will have two axes. And then I'm going to have one more Wrathmonger unit in here as well. The last elements of the list will be a reinforced unit of Mighty Skull Crushers. I kind of want to see how these guys play, running up the side of the board and just hammering and seeing how far they can push through on their own individually. And uh, we have one invocation to fill out the 2,000 points. That'll be the Bleeding Icon. And then, uh, sorry if that was long-winded, folks. That's it, I promise, for the Blades of Corn. Let's go take a look at the Cruel Boys. All right, guys, so my name is Thomas, and I have 2, 000, uh, 1975 points of Cruel Boys. The battalion I am playing right now, I have the Grinning Blades as my sub-faction. My grand strategy is Crump Them All. Uh, so starting off with my list, I have a Grand Battery Core Battalion, which will contain my Swamp Kala Shaman with the Black Pit as his spell, and then two Beast Skewer Kill Boys. Followed up, I have Swamp Boss Scumdrek, Gopsprack, then I also have a Kill a Boss on Great uh, Nashtooth. Sorry for the pronunciation, this army is pretty hard. Uh, he will be my general. He has the command trait Supa Sneaky. The artifact is the Eye Bitter Ash. And for his mount trait, I took the Fast Un. Followed up, I have a reinforced unit of Gut Rippas uh, with two banners and two drummers. I have a single 10 man Gut Rippas squad with a horn blower, a banner, and uh, then followed up, I have a Hobgrat Slitas uh, squad with the noisemaker and the totem and to finish everything up i have a reinforced man skewer bolt boy uh, squad six man 
and a Marsh Crawler Slogoth. Today's mission, we put a little bit of a narrative flair on. Gobsprack has commissioned some sort of concoction which we'll be using to represent the objective in the middle here. And the forces of corn, you know, looking for a good fight, also cannot allow this concoction to come to fruition. So we are here to essentially take it over either for ourselves or destroy it. Doesn't really matter, but uh, we got to fight for it. So we randomized ours for the taking, which was uh, fitting actually for this mission here. Uh, we do have three objectives. The center objective will be the concoction uh, that Gobstrack is making. And then uh, each player will have a home objective on their territory as well. And as for territories, you could, uh, we have fun little L's here in our Polygon Wars. And uh, not quite a Dawn of War style deployment, but pretty close to it as we deploy along the long table edge uh, opposite one another. Now scoring is going to work as follows. Uh, you'll gain one victory point if you control your own home objective. You'll gain a victory point if you control the center objective. And if you somehow manage to take control of the enemy's objective, you'll gain two points. Now on top of all of that, you'll gain a victory point if you control the center objective. And it is also contested by a champion. And naturally two per battle tactic every turn, and three for your grand strategy at the end. Whoever has five, or sorry, whoever has the most points after five rounds will be the winner. I just wanted to show off the table a little bit before Thomas and I muddy it up with our models. We're playing on a six by four mat here from Urban Map, but we're not playing with the full size. We are playing with the, the minimum size. So like anything on this side and over, not in play, we're just gonna roll dice over there for the most part. Uh, but we know to play over here. We're not playing with a two inch strip here. So this is a six foot by four foot mat. If you like the coloration and the patterning of it, it is Urban Mats. That'll be in the description down below. However, everything else is Games Workshop. We just kind of set up a table that ended up being all Games Workshop terrain because we wanted to use the new Warcraft. Well, new-ish yeah. Warcraft terrain, right? Yeah. I don't know how new it is nowadays, but it's we recent for us. Uh, and uh, it kind of fit the Cruel Boy theme. Uh, even though it is for Warcry, it still fits, and we have the Maw Pot from the Ogre line here, kind of representing the concoction, the objective in the middle. Uh, we're gonna play, we're gonna play the Maw Pot like it's a regular objective, so we're just gonna keep count the middle of it as yep. the objective point, and then nice and simple from there. And then these are just regular objectives representing like the areas of control we don't want to lose uh, as we push for the middle and towards the enemy there. Uh, otherwise, uh, we're gonna go ahead and roll off and deploy and pick our sides. But I do want to remind people watching, you can go to miniwargaming.com/challenge and come play war games with us here like my friend here Tom has done. We're playing Age of Sigmar today. We'll play anything. Go to the go to the link. Go to the description down below. You'll talk to Josh. <laughs> You'll sign me up. We're always looking for Sigmar, but we know we play obviously 40k, everything. I'm looking for a lot of the specialty games as well. So if you play it and you want to come on the channel and you're nearby, you know, maybe go uh, talk to Josh there a little exactly. bit. Also, also, we're in Niagara Falls. Just to give you guys an idea of where yeah. that is, well in Ontario, kind of that that area. Yeah. Niagara Falls is easy enough to like a good landmark, it, I guess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like where do you guys? Oh, we're near this like this like big big water. Yeah. <laughs> We've got the big water there. That's where you have to go. Anyways, are you ready for this nonsense? I'm always ready for this. Oh, I do want to give a shout out to uh, your gaming club too over in Montreal. Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm here representing Ted's Hobby Shop in uh, the west the western tip of the island. Um, we play pretty much every game system there is from GW, as well as Bolt Action, MCP, Song of Ice and Fire, uh, and some other game systems that I'm probably forgetting, so I apologize to the guys at the club that uh, play that. <laughs> but usually Thursday nights, uh, we all throw down and start playing, and Saturdays, are, the tables are also available uh, for people to show up and play. Perfect. And that's uh, you know, uh, the island of Montreal, so the, the city proper and all that. Yep. So if you're nearby and you're kind of looking for people to play with, and you just don't know where to look, well, consider uh, Ted's. Because uh, exactly. uh, Ted's actually here with us right now. He's in the other room playing yeah. bolt action. You're it's gonna see a lot. Pete, he owns. Ted's oh, oh, Peter, sorry. Oh, Peter, Peter owns. Okay, yeah. sorry, my bad. Yeah, <laughs> Peter owns it, but it's it's Ted's. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, it's uh, you'll see a lot of games with uh, Tom, Nick, and Peter, and uh, you know the whole crew from Montreal. Yeah. Anyways, uh, let's uh, play some Sigmar. Let's do it. And uh, well, we're back, everyone, and we are deployed. I won the roll off. I chose this side. I put my altar down over here and then started deploying like a few things because you have to defend your home objective. So I put my Gorfist over here with Reavers and then put Wrathmongers just in case. And then I started seeing like Thomas's deployment over here. I'm like, oh, you're going like pretty heavy on your side over there. So I also started going pretty heavy on this side. Uh, so on my side over here, I can go halfway up the board and then up to about this point here. And then over here, we have to go all the way. Whereas you could do the same. You went yeah. uh, pretty far forward with just uh, Hobgrots. With just Hobgrots <laughs> to take some ground. But I, I got I, hopefully enough defenses over here against Hobgrots, uh, as opposed to all of the uh, folks that put over here. I feel like I'm, I feel like I have too many things. I don't have the big expensive name characters. I, yeah, um, but I, I just like the names. Uh, I get it. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, it's kind of weird seeing orcs or 
Cruel Boys as the Elite Army and Blades of Corner being the Horde Army. I'm right the Horde now. Army in this case. Yeah, I just have like so many buy. I did have a different list where I had a lot more Reavers in it, but then it felt like a little too... It might have been too boring to play where it literally just been Reavers over Reavers over Reavers. I might still try it, but there's a lot of things I have to try uh, in Sigma right now and not enough time to do it. That's why I need more guests to come by and play. That's why I need more to go to the challenge. Anyways, uh, regardless, uh, I had lots of drops. I had no single battalions. You had... Did you have lots of drops as well? Uh, I had one battalion, which was the Siege Artillery one. Oh, yeah. Okay, so just a bunch of drops, but I yeah. believe you still outdrop me. Double checking, I had about 13 or 14 drops. You had about around 11, so yeah. you get to dictate. Who's, do you have any idea who you want to go first yet, or do you want to think about it a little bit? I feel I want to go first. Okay, turn one for you guys. That yeah. works. That works. Uh, to go over some of my... I have my characters kind of hidden in here because uh, they blend in nicely. So my Exalted Deathbringer is over there. I have my Blood Secrator. This is my general. This is the high priest of corn. He's the spiritual leader of the army. And we have our ritualist behind him. Skull Grinder, I believe he's called. Is this uh, Gore Chosen there? And then that's it. No more characters on this side. I will say he is like, um, he's somewhat of a smith or a craftsman, I suppose, as well as killing monsters. He has to pick another Gore Chosen in the list and like forge that guy's weapons. So he forged the Exalted Deathbringer's weapons, and they are um, that axe is more rend. That's a, yeah. he just increases the rend of that axe. While he himself is good at fighting monsters. <laughs> yeah, that's the tempered with fury ability. So I got that right. They are craftsmen, and then uh, he tempered uh, this guy's weapon, made it even more hateful, and more gory, and more bloody, and more killy. It just increases the rend though. And like I mentioned earlier, he's in the Galician Command with the Wrathmongers right there. If I remember for that to even remotely come up. Uh, I do want to go over my grand strategy. Uh, the most fun one in the corn book is easily a skull or a worthy skull or a foe with a worthy skull. It's one of those. So effectively, Tom is going to pick one of his heroes that I must kill. And my high priest of corn needs to live. My general has to live. So it's not the easiest grand strategy, but it's very fitting for corn. So I'm gonna pick Scumdrek. Ah, as perfect. The, your target, Scumdrek over there. So I got yeah. he's got the worthy skull. So I got to take him out, and uh, that's effectively. What was your grand strategy? Uh, it's the crump them all. So basically, you cannot have more than three units left on the battlefield. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta try to kill a lot. <laughs> that's nuts. Okay, yeah, heck yeah. yeah. For cruel boys, uh, good luck. <laughs> all right, fair, absolutely. And then we're we're gonna play the game. So. Uh, I'm gonna go second. You'll be going first to try and do like that opening salvo, yeah. I guess. Yeah, see what that's, you can get going that's on what there. I'm gonna try. All right, well, good luck to you and the cruel Thank boys. Uh, good luck to Corn. I'm just hoping to let the blood flow and uh, see where this goes and try to remember my rules. <laughs> I got a lot of like little dumb characters it's gonna be difficult with. Anyways, the game begins. We're gonna be using our Banduel War Games uh, victory point counter over here. I'll be the enemy for this game on the right, and then Thomas will be on the left there. All right, so before the game starts, uh, I'm going to pick one of my dirty tricks as a cruel boy. And the one I'm taking is Noisy Rackets. So basically, you're minus one to wound me on the first battle round. Because you kept me up all night. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> so party, minus, party hard. all of my attacks are minus one to wound for the, whole, the first battle round. Uh, minus one wound to your wound rolls. Okay. Yeah, yeah. for the first battle round. That works for me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anything else you have to do in the beginning before the Um, I, If I'm not mistaken, I gave my general, which is uh, the... the Kill a boss. Um, I'm gonna re basically redeploy my Hobgrots. Okay. Before the game starts. Oh, that's his command trait. Yeah, yeah. He's like a sneaky. Yeah. Shimmying them up a little forward there. Yeah. I do have one correction on my deployment zone. I was reading, I was just uh, double checking their rules. His tempered with fury has to target something within eight inches. So I'm gonna, gonna cheat Thomas here. I'm gonna redeploy this blood secretor and this guy. Swap their spots. Then, I'll allow it. Thank you. That way, that way he can target him with the eight inches. I didn't realize there was a uh, range on it, and it doesn't matter if the blood scraper is here or there. What do you think for battle tactic? Uh, I'm gonna take take that, ya suckers. <laughs> what, what's going on uh, here? So this one here, I basically have to cause ten wounds or mortal wounds and not suffer ten. Oh, I remember or this wounds. one. Yeah, yeah. yeah I okay. think it's good since I'm going first. I have a better <laughs> chance of getting this off right now. Okay, fair, easy. Yeah. The cruel boys players for mispronouncing and or poorly mispronouncing the names for a lot of these rules. It, it, it's it's tough. It's uh well they got it's real biggins uh, uh, stinky ones fastens. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's the orc lingo, you know. Yeah. It is what it is. Hard to pronounce. Hard to pronounce sometimes. And for heroic actions, we're both gonna go for command points. I'm gonna go four up. I got the four. You got, got the six. six. I'm gonna put mine on my totem, my banner, the BSB. Um, gonna 
You're going to put it on yours, on your shaman? Yeah, my shaman. Uh, as f we also forgot to note, the uh, shaman is the fueled by Gurish Rage as well as my general. That's the champion enhancement for this season of war. So the first time they die, they have a chance to come back to life under certain circumstances. Not all, not all circumstances make them come back to life. All right, so in the hero phase, I am going to use Gob, uh, Gobsprack to try Sneaky Miasma, which basically allows a free move on a monster unit if su successfully cast. Okay, Let's see if you get it then. I don't really have too many unbinds. Uh, nine? Uh, nine, that is definitely gonna go off. Uh, I'll let you have it, because I don't really know what the uh, consequences of uh, denying it would be. Uh, like the consequences would be it doesn't go off, but I, I, there's other things I gotta worry about. <laughs> so I'm gonna end up Putting it onto um, Ooh, I know it? Scum, Scum Drek. Scum Drek. Yeah, Scum Drek is gonna move, so he gets to do a little move here. Yeah. Oop. Hello. So he'll take up that spot instead. That's a hero phase move. Yeah. So the next spell I'm gonna cast is Mystic Shield, and got that will go off. Uh, you got. You know what? I'll try and stop that. I guess. Nope. That's the right. one. <laughs> it's gonna go on the Killer Boss right there, who's holy within twelve. Okay. So. His spell is the uh, the Black Pit, which unfortunately is not in range of anything as it stands, but I will still be able to give a poison uh, to a unit, and I'm going to put the poison elixir onto the uh, both boys. Yeah, further, you know, toxifying their weapons. Yeah. Because uh, it makes it, like, it triggers on fives, is that on what fives, it is? fives, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. that's right. Yeah, because I got to try and remember, because if, 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 if anyone near him does it, it works on sixes, but it's more deadly. Yeah. But his is more consistent. His happens more. Exactly. Yet. That's right, yeah. And, and you cannot stack the plus one mortal yeah. wound on the five plus with these Correct. guys. So it's That's only on sixes around scum direct that you get the extra mortal wounds. Remember there's like a little bit of nuance there. And allegedly that guy got a, that guy got a rata to cast spells and feed uh, yeah. the talk, which is nice because it was always kind of weird before yeah. that he couldn't do that. Exactly. Uh, anything else in the hero phase? That would be it for now. All right, so we're going to go into movement. Uh, this is what it starts. We're going to show you where it ends. I'm going to assume not a lot of movement actually uh, whatsoever. So <laughs> we'll be back. We're going to hold the line. Just a minute. And to no one's surprise, uh, not a lot of movement. So what, uh, what went down here? Uh, shimmied over on this side. Uh, we shimmied yet again up front <laughs> here and kind of moved everyone a little to the... Oh, we could say that they moseyed. Oh, we're going to go with that? Yeah, okay. we'll go okay. with the mosey. So they shimmy, they shimmy, they moseyed. Yeah. Uh, uh, they tried to run and tripped over their shoelaces. They got uh, a one. They got a one. <laughs> uh, the, and the Mystic Shield's on the killer boss. That's yeah. right. Okay, yeah. And Gobsprack uh, fluttered over <laughs> fluttered. a couple of inches. Exactly. Just to protect his concoction, which is right in the yeah. middle there. Uh, otherwise, uh, that's effectively it. Oh, uh, oh yeah. and I moved these guys over to try to screen out a little bit as much as I can with 10 hop cross. Exactly. Yeah, that goes. Staying nice and safely away from I, I want to do like a little bit, like, because I think you guys are like 80 points as well. Yeah. Or around that. Let's do like a crappy 80 point fight. Yep. And see who wins the 80 point fight. I, I won't fight them until one of the, the there's a champion unit, and then they can just die. <laughs> yeah. So I'll charge my Reavers in, and then we'll figure it out from there. Perfect. Well, yeah. Uh, what do you want to do? What do you want to start shooting? Uh, I'm going to target with my, uh, <laughs> each one of these, uh, the, the artillery pieces, I'm going to target into your uh, blood crushers or blood. Uh, Skull, blood crushers, skull reavers, something, something skull. Any combination of skull or blood in your your blood correct. skull crushers. They're mighty skull crushers. The blood crushers are the demon ones. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I own the blood crushers, so that's why I just associate that. I, I actually don't know if the juggernauts are technically demons or not. I think they're demonic. The, the, the line has blurred a little bit since they were very definitely demonic back in the day. Yeah. I like to run all mortals, but I, I, I can't really say that when I have juggernauts in the list because I think they're technically demonic mounts. Probably. So, um, but hey, they're armored head to toe. <laughs> uh, so best of luck to them. They're about to get shot by some artillery. I actually don't know how yours works. Is that two separate? It's two separate, so I'm going to do one at a time. We'll resolve one at a time. All right, well, perfect. I know that they don't have the fancy mortal wound protection like the Slays of Darkness do, sadly, but eh, maybe my thick armor saves will get me through there. What's the rend like? Uh, I believe it is minus two, but it's the shenanigans that I then roll based on the amount of wounds you have in the unit. Right, yeah. Or per model. Per model, which is still kind of yeah. high. Yeah, and then that you'll suffer two plus that many mortal wounds if I roll on a five plus or something Correct. like that. Correct, that's right, yeah. Uh, is it only one shot each? It's one shot each, yes. I think you're going to put more shots in them, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to all out defense them all the same. And I'm going to use that... 
I'm gonna use it for my totem if it's in range. It's funny enough, maybe not in range. Yeah, it's a totem, it's probably in range. He is not holy within 18, so I'll, they're just gonna all defense themselves using one of my base command points, I suppose. Their uh, brass clad shields are mage protecting its spells, unlike the Slaves of Darkness, which just have uh, strictly better ones. Start with the far guy. With the far guy. Twang, one Need shot. Need a hit on a two. Oh, well, that's a good start. It hits. Unfortunately, there's no. Oh, it's just weapons. a hit. It's yeah. just a hit. I, I uh, so I need a three to wound you. Okay, that's a wound. Which are wound at minus two. So they have a two up save base. Uh, this is gonna be a three up after the rend. Oh, didn't need the all out defense. He's made it with a six. Shoot. Excellent. You want to try the second one? Yeah. Twang. The, and we want a five, or we actually no, want a six. Yeah. A six on this guy. For sure. Yeah. But Oh, are you kidding me? Okay, well, again, those are mostly meant to hunt down giant monsters. I don't have any of that in my list. That's the best, other than a character, I guess. Yeah. Would be the best target. Now we have the actual ones I'm afraid of. Yeah. So these guys here. Yeah, this and... is why I all the defense, because I figure they're yeah. going to get shot. These guys have a giant bullseye on their head. These guys are, they're not like, they're like, they are like what I imagine the Gortide to be. Like, they, the whole idea of the Gortide is they take, they take ground, they're conquerors. These guys conquer. Yeah. <laughs> No need to all-load attack because we're hitting on twos and we're just looking for them venom-encrusted weapons. So, so we're looking for sixes. Fives, actually. Oh, fives because they got the poison. poison. Get out of here. Hey, you got five. Oh, it's oh. a good thing you fed the toxin. Yeah, though, so though. everything hits, though. So this will automatically be two mortal wounds. Yep, can't do anything about that. And then these are wounding. These are going to wound on a three. Ah, uh, that is... Oh. You did say you rolled pretty badly. Yeah. Yeah, okay. He warned me beforehand. <laughs> What's the rent normally on these? Uh, this is going to be a minus one. Minus one. So we're going to go with a fun interactive two up save with all the defense active and we take our two mortal wounds. We're going to say you take the wounds back there because once I lose one guy, the coherency is not as tight on them. I should have put a disclaimer at the beginning of this video. Thomas warned me several times off camera how bad his die rolling is. Yep, it's, it's, it's already bad. begun. It's bad. <laughs> That is such a sad outcome of the. That's the shooting phase, eh? Yeah, and I was hope. Oh man, I'm not getting my battle tactic. I, 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 oh, that's rough. That's <laughs> that's not ideal, dude. It's. <laughs> oof. Okay, well. Uh, I drove six hours for this. <laughs> hey, we got more games to play. At least we got more games to play. For scoring, you get one for your objective. Yeah. Um, and then he was he was moved just to be within six, I believe. Yeah, and I just move him a little bit further forward in case he needs to. Yeah, he yeah. was he was meant to control that. Uh, so that's two victory points, and then that's it. Yep. Rough start, but a lot of game to play still. You know what? It's an uphill battle, but it's <laughs> there's still a chance, boys. There's still a chance. Just a little update. I got two victory points. Oh, no, no, Thomas has two victory points. I got zilch. All right, so I'm gonna match you. Ridiculous battle tactic for ridiculous battle tactic here. Yours isn't like yours didn't work at all, not yeah. at all. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the trial of skulls here. I'm gonna pick one of my units on the battlefield, and if they kill eight or more models, they'll get the battle tactic. So these reavers, who I've engaged in honorable combat with these hobgrots, are gonna go through a very. Uh, important ritual for a Blades of Core and Blood Reaver. That is the Trial of Skull. So if they can kill eight of those models, <laughs> I'll get my battle tactic complete. If not, uh, we tried. We're gonna have a little game of fisticuffs. Yeah, yeah, this this game has become silly. Oh, you know what? I got the Wrathmongers to help out. I'm gonna cheat a little bit. These Wrathmongers are gonna give an extra attack. That is, it's, so it, it'll be a little, a little bit in my favor, I think. But nothing else will shoot them or charge them. Just these Reavers. They are going through the Trial of Skulls, and that's happening right now. Trying to have a little fun with it. All right, that's it uh, for that battle tactic. That's for actions. Uh, keep it kind of simple with uh, leadership, I suppose. I got it on a, I failed it on a three. I'm going to go for the command point. Yeah, I go for leadership as well. Four up. Yeah. Boop. Got it. Do you know who you want it on? Um, I'm going to put it on this guy. All right. Uh, I got a couple prayers to throw. I didn't want to put anyone in my terrain piece because I was a little too afraid of all the shooting you had. So I kind of like kept them on the ground in your battle line stuff. That, that's going to be moving forward and everything. So I didn't want to commit them to the terrain piece. But the terrain piece still has a purpose. I think. Yeah. Like I it. think you're safe to put them on the terrain piece because I can't hit a barn. I <laughs> I am going to go with some prayers. Let's go with our high priest of corn here. Our general is going to go for, uh, he gets to do two prayers. He will do bronzed flesh, which is what he knows built in. He does get it. That's going to go on the muddy skull crushers, give him plus one of their save to survive like another volley coming at them, I assume. And then his second one, he's going to go for the invocation, which is the bleeding icon. Try and get it on the table. I actually have no idea if a three works. We'll put the bleeding icon right there. It does indeed work on a three. I get to double the range of invocations if you chant them from the altar. But let me explain how I put the altar down over here because I thought I'd be protecting my objective a lot more. And then the game decided to be played over here. So I had to scrap the whole altar idea 
and then play without it effectively because a lot of the games will be played on this part of the battlefield. Apparently, someone didn't want to try to invade my home territory. Someone just wanted to fight over here. So, fine. I, I thought I would be able to shoot, but that's not <laughs> Well, you have, you at least you have four more tries. <laughs> four, more tries. Four, more tri four more tries of disappointment. <laughs> it does immediately move. It moves every one of my hero phases, and after a setup, it just moves eight. But if you summon it from here, it can go 16, then move eight, and have an effect right away. Not that that matters too much for corn. I guess it's better for the Wrath Axe. He's going to end up right there, and then we have our Ritualist back here who knows Sacrifice. Uh, to get a Blood Tithe point, eh? She can't do her Hex built-in one because it's not in range. So I guess we'll try and get a Blood Tithe point. Oh no! Instead! See, I was going to target her anyways, but instead she just takes some mortal wound from Corn. He ain't happy about it. She's going to have four remaining wounds. I believe that'll be it for my hero phase. So we're going to go right on to movement. Everything's moving. I'll tell you what runs and what doesn't run, but I'm going to show you where everything ends up. We gotta, we gotta fight for all of the objectives everywhere, and we want to get the scrapping. What's more important is this. This fight here is very important. Okay, well, everything ran or didn't run. In fact, the only things that didn't run were the mighty skull crushers, the reavers out front, and then these re these reavers. Everything else ran and got to where it was. The things that are worth noting: they're screening up this area a little bit by run. Everything rolled well too. I think everything rolled like up. A four up. The, the lowest you rolled was a three. <laughs> on my run. On, like, on, on most of your characters, everything else yeah. got fives and sixes. Just up the board, just yep. boom, right up there. That object is mine, this object is still mine. I'm gonna try and fight for that one. Uh, as for my characters, the Skull Grinder stayed out, four, out front. My general, my high priest is there. My ritualist is right here, within an inch of my battle lines. Our exalted Deathbringer ran forward with the Wrathmonger as part of his command behind him. And I think that's it, that's all five, Mike, that's four. Where's my fifth character? I have a fifth character somewhere. Oh, there he is, Blood Screeder. There he is, right there in the middle. Uh, otherwise, um, to note the pacing, the first thing that moved were the Blood Reavers, and there was no real redeploy off them. Nothing else really moved within nine of Thomas's front line there. What I'm going to try and do is a cheeky charge with these guys. They get plus one of their charge, because the guy blowing the horn with his big, big, strong lungs. Uh, these guys are a 10-inch charge away, but they get plus one with the horn. So I'm going to hopefully make it into a charge with them after the blood, uh, the Reavers get in there. Uh, Reavers, of course, going to be charging because I like, just try and do as much damage to them as I can before it goes down. Then we have an honor fight over here, uh, which we have to resolve as well. And uh, that is uh, about it. I have no shooting because we're playing corn. I don't have any skull Well, I mean, I shouldn't say that. There are skull cannons. There are things that do shoot in the demon side, but the mortal side typically doesn't have as much of it. And uh, we're right on to charging proper, the corn phase. Uh, one thing I gotta watch out for is that you are playing skull bugs. So I'll have to do, um, not, is it kind of like leadership checks, I guess, in yeah. a way. In a way, yeah. yeah. Uh, because these guys are like, they're like, they have like a lot of graffiti on them, a lot of tattoos. They're literal bugs crawling out of them in every way, so they're kind of eerie to fight against. Uh, so it's like a negative one to hit them, because uh, I kind of fear them. Let's try a charge with these Reavers first. Uh, they do have a horn blower. Yeah, there he's back there. Some of my Reavers don't have the full command because they're built in 20s for back in the day. So I like to run a lot of 10-man squads. Now with a plus one, they roll a five. Not getting too far, really, but I don't want to go too far out of their eight. So in a way, it works. They, they aren't veterans, though, is the thing. They are just, uh, just Reavers hanging out, maybe part of a warlord. Who knows? Don't have any room for veterans. Don't have any room for reavers in my veteran battalion. You know? But I gotta kill eight Hobgrots, which will be a problem. That'll be difficult. We'll see. <laughs> uh, no other charges though. Again, we are honor bound to fight. Our little pseudo battle line units fighting one another. Uh, the only other charge I have will be on this side of the table. We're gonna start with the reavers back there. And they're gonna declare a charge and see what they get. They get plus one to this roll. I am gonna roll a nine in total. We do have scare tactics, how does this work? So I'm gonna roll 2d6, um, and I add plus one for every five models in the unit. Okay. If I beat your bravery, uh, one unit within 12 uh, will have minus one to hit rolls against okay. this unit they here. They kind of clatter their shields a little before yeah. I charge it. I right, roll it up. You're definitely gonna, is it two dice or one dice? It's a uh, 2d6. Oh, okay. Yeah, that is not a hero or monster. Oh, you definitely beat, they're bravery like five or six. Yeah. So uh, you get to pick anything within 12 to be um... Yeah, so I'm gonna pick actually your skull crushers in case they get in, I yes, want them true. to be minus one to be hit. Absolutely, I get that. So you have to picking them for the negative one to hit, you rolled an eight on the dice, plus your four modifier definitely beats their bravery. Yeah. So the, the rattling shields works. I also, also have to remember the negative one to wound for this battle round as well. Uh, when I do go to fight you. So I got to move them in first. 
And it crashed into the front lines of the cruel boys. What are they called? The stinky boys. Here. Uh, these guys are um, gut, ri gut rippers. Gut rippers. Gut rippers. With, Thank the, you. with the wicked hackers. Uh, wicked stickers. Wicked stickers. That's right. That's them. Uh, trying to stay three away from the boss, and then uh, we're gonna have our mighty skull crushers declare a charge. Now it is a ten inch charge, because we're like nine and three quarters away. However, we get a horn blower, so it's a nine. I am gonna forward to victory that, or try to. We fail. Okay, but we tried. That'll be my only charges. I definitely want to try and do some damage to these gut rippers. So I think I'm gonna go with them first. Yes. Got four in the back there not fighting. Just push them back a little bit to show that off. So I'll have these six all in range to swing. All right, we do have to roll the skull bug thing up though. How does this work? So I roll um, uh, one dice. If you were actually within range of a monster or, uh, yeah, of a monster, um, it would be plus two to the roll. So in this case, I'm just looking for a six up and your reavers over there will be minus one. Because <laughs> I'm their kind of roll. afraid of you, gotcha. So it's a four up near a monster. Hey, hey, you got the skull bug thing, excellent. So I'm negative one to hit you. Yeah. And I'm negative one to wound because of the scare, uh, the scare tactics from earlier. Oh, uh, no, well, the scare tactics went on the... Um... Oh, from the, um, like the, sorry, the uh, the sneaky ploy or in the beginning of the game. The first right, battle. yes, yeah. the minus one to wound. You banged yes. on your shields and kept me awake yeah. all night. Then they didn't like that, but they can't do anything about it. However, we are gore-tied and we are fighting a unit contesting an objective we do not control, so we get plus one wound. So after everything is said and done, two attacks each, force and force, no random one damage. A totem is uh, too far away to help. There we go. All right, an outstanding amount of rune rolls. We got uh, three at no rend on it. I'm gonna have a five up. <laughs> nice, sick. Right, nice, me too. All right. Only one damage. We're on a guy back here. <laughs> we clash, and that is it. Would you like to fight with them next or your grots? I'm gonna see if the hobgrots could do anything. Okay. Well, just to this side of the table, we're gonna have the grots fight. I don't do the skull bug thing until I fight them, though, so uh, don't have to worry about my negative one to hit yet. Piling them in, they were all relatively close enough to the Reavers, not that the worry about straining them out too far that way. Six of them are going to attack the Reavers because the other four can't reach. They don't have any toxic weapons, venom encrusted weapons, sorry, uh, but they do have uh, every six hits, two hits because yeah. uh, it's like I'm, they're the whole They're going to shiv you. Yeah, they're, they're good at stabbing. I see no sixes naturally for Tom. <laughs> four hits out of all of that. Uh, turns, I think this fight's gonna be going on a lot longer yeah. than I think it will be. And I need five to wound you. Oh my gosh, no damage! Come on, I didn't even get my murder attacks against you. All right, fine. I'll pile in and fight right back. Not really uh, getting as much as I thought out of that one, if I'm to be <laughs> honest. But if you go drag that buddy with like barrel of monkeys here, dude, you'll fight there. And then I think I'm only really getting those guys to fight with. So there's only five guys fighting. I'm going to have to roll pretty freaking well to get the uh, eight wounds for the Trial of Skulls. And then just being a little bit more careful with the pile in, not really changing much, but keeping them within, holding within eight of that one Wrathmonger for the extra attack there. So that should help me out a little bit. With those five guys attacking, that'll be a grand total of 16 uh, no, 15 attacks because the champion's uh, lagging behind over here. He's not able to attack. Well, first, let's check out that Skull Bug roll. I'm looking for six. Oh. Nope. 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 I get uh, I hit you on threes as normal, uh, but fives because I don't get plus one to wound. So we're threes to hit, fives to wound because of the uh, the tactics for the first battle round. Would you like to all the defense here? Uh, I don't think it's worth it. I wonder. I might for this because this is the second. I'm gonna all. I mean, you might as well. I'm gonna all out attack. Might as well all out defend. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. We'll do it here. I'm hitting on twos now. That's not a bad roll. I got the one miss. Do you need five to wound? We're a little too tired to commit to this attack. Oh, look, we got three. <laughs> you know what? I'll have you know your roll didn't matter because I only rolled ones and threes. Three five up saves. Ba, 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 ba. I do. Oh, oh, look, it mattered for two of them. I killed one. one. Boop. Hey, we did it. Well, I obviously don't get my trial of skulls, but hey, not every blood reaver can succeed in a trial of skulls. Sometimes they just die instead. And then you get to fight back with the large unit over here. I'll let you pile it all in. You have yep. better reach and everything too, so. Pile in the mid, it's gonna be 12 of them able to attack. Are they two attacks each? They're two attacks each and plus one for uh, the champion in the squad. So 25 attacks with their venom encrusted stickers. Now, th did either of these augment the toxic, the venom rolls? This guy will give plus one to their hit rolls for melee. Um, with they're wholly within 18, so uh, we'll double check that. That's got he's like an all-out attack yeah. bubble. Nice. And that's it. That's it. There's no other buff to their venom encrusted weapons okay. or anything like that. Well, bring it on then. Threes to hit here, but sixes are good. Yep. This is this is all of them. This is all the attacks going in right now. 
So that's six dead right there because these are mortal wounds. Yeah. Uh, but they're only one mortal wound because they're not near is a mon monster. increase it by one. That's what it was. It's yeah. Scumdrick increases it. Scumdrick's monster. That's yeah. Right, yeah. And then three's to hit because you got the, the three's weird, to hit, yeah. the catcher thing nearby. I don't know what it's called. It's the Marsh Crawler. Oh my god. <laughs> Tro marsh, a Marsh Crawler Trogoth. Oh, it's a troll under there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, that's nasty. And these are forced to wound otherwise. I only really have three left, and I owe you three, four saves? Four saves at three wounds, six ups. One guy lives, uh, and the rest are all dead. But uh, I will probably leave it at that because blood tithe points. So they all get murder strikes, so, so the corn, the, the mortal side of corn, before they die, they get like one attack before they die. And then I pick a unit within three inches of the model that's removed, and then that unit takes a mortal wound on a five up. So I'm going to remove everyone but the champion, and they're all within three. Actually, that's not true. That one guy in the back there is probably not within three. Okay, yeah, he's within three, so that'll be nine potential mortal wounds against you, but I need fives. All right, little Reaver unit, go! Before they die, they do a mortal wound. Take that! <laughs> Let's finish off the one wounded orc, and then these guys are all dead. <laughs> that's uh, what it looks like when the dust settles. Interesting. Now, the question is, do I inspire him in case I don't get priority, but if I do get priority... I'm probably going to inspire him because the odds are not in my favor. Anyways, we're right on to morale. Uh, I have to do mine first. I am going to inspire that champion. He he is going to go down dying or fighting. He's going to die fighting, not running away, which means I don't get a blood tithe point, but I don't think I really need it too badly right now. And it means I'll just get it later. Bravery six on your cruel boys. Yep. You're good. Thank God. And then over to here, you did lose some of your... I lost one Hobgrot. Oh, they probably could lose one more on a six or yeah. a five. And it's going to be a three. You're okay. I didn't lose any Reavers, so they're good to go. That'll be the end of my turn. Unfortunately, I did not finish my Trial of Skulls. So I don't get my battle tactic, but that's okay. It was uh, an ambitious battle tactic, to say the least. But it was kind of fun. And I did say I can't interact with that unit until one of them is dead. So that fight will go... For me... That fight is like in another plane of existence. I gotta know who's gonna win that one when that comes up later. Otherwise though, I get one point for holding the middle. I don't have a champion contesting it though, now that I think about it, he's a little too far away. So there's one point there. One point for my own territory and you still have yours. So just a two-two tie at the end of the first battle round here. Nice, close game, Thomas. <laughs> and we're gonna roll off to see who gets priority in the next turn. I am gonna roll a, gosh, come on. <laughs> That is a rough position for the Cruel Boys to be in because this guy inspired and I got a double turn. So they can't do the scare tactics and they can't redeploy. So they're just stuck there eating the charge from anything that wants to charge them. Oh gosh, I'm gonna, I mean, okay. I'd be crazy to not take it and it is corn. So I'm probably gonna take it even though I think it'll be a doc. It could potentially be a doctor murder, but you know what? If uh, uh, Scumdreck, uh, his plans fail, he can just fly away and he's got more plans elsewhere, right? I, I'm, I'm cool with that. Look, I used to play corn too, so no matter what, <laughs> I win. I win. So. There we go. Okay, fine. We'll see, we'll see corn do something cool as I try to uh, uh, take the priority here and rush forward and secure the middle a little bit more with some champions and uh, see what uh, other nonsense I can pull out here. Now, I don't, I don't have to worry about the minus one to wound anymore either. That one's out of here. Just a little points update as we go into the top of the second battle round. I'm gonna go for an ambitious battle tactic again because uh, uh, Nuffle was kind enough to give me a double turn here. Might as well try and keep pushing it. Let's go with Leave None Alive. I'm gonna pick this unit uh, because it's in gate. Ooh, wait a second. It might be a clause to this I'm not thinking of. Okay, that one was a little too ambitious. So I had to pick one of my units, engage with an enemy, and then at the end of this turn, I get my battle tactic. If that entire enemy unit he's engaged with is dead, he's still alive. So that's a little ambitious. I don't think I'm gonna go over that one. That's a corn one. I don't wanna show off the cool corn ones. I thought it was, I mean, technically, I could kill them with everything else and he'd have to live, but the chance of him living, not likely. So we're gonna scrap that one. Uh, I think, I don't even know if I, I kinda wanna make the battlefield run red but I don't even know four things are gonna die this turn. And that's four things including my own options as well. You know what, I'm gonna go with gaining momentum. Kind of similar, I'm gonna pick this unit of uh, uh, Stabas, that's Gut Rippers. If they're destroyed and I hold more objectives than you do, I will uh, get my battle tactic. Now I know there's much easier choices, uh, the Hobgrots all alone, but again, that is a one-on-one -on -one fight and we're gonna honor that. So I'm gonna have to go for the much harder unit to kill over here and uh, see if we get that. As for other things, I am definitely gonna go for 
I have a Warlord Battalion. I'm going to use my Warlord Battalion's extra command point now to gain one. So I'll go to three. And I believe I'm going to try for leadership as well. Because there's going to be a lot of fighting this battle round. So I'm going to need the command points, I think. Right or wrong? Or do I try and recover? I'll just go with command points. I got it. It'll go on my general, I guess, over here. What would you like to do? Um, I'm going to go for the command point as well. Okay. Four up. Boop, 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 boop. No! Let's try some prayers yet again. I already have that. Uh, that thing gets to move. This hero phase will do that. It's just going to move that way. And uh, let's see here. Let's go with bronzed flesh. We fail that. We actually take a mortal wound on our high priest of corn. No rerolls because we're too far away from the altar. And then his second prayer. Hmm. I'm going to blood boil your general. I'm going to make his blood boil on a four up. Oh, he does. He's going to suffer four mortal wounds. He just does d6 mortal wounds. 16 in range though. We have six wounds left after his blood boils a little bit. Not Obviously not that bad. Uh, it, it could, he could be dead. Well, I mean, mechanically no, but you could never know. Uh, as for the ritualist behind our general, let's go for a good old fashioned sacrifice. Oh, we got it. Let's say the ritualist takes her own mortal wounds. Please don't take three. Ritualist, stop it. No, <laughs> no, that's a blood time point. Choose her because she can hero recover. I just didn't want to take, you know, three damage on it. But hey, I'll take any amount of damage for corn, baby. Should conclude my hero phase. I do have blood tithe points here I could do things with. I don't think I need to. Murder lust could be clutch, but I don't think I need it. So we're gonna go right on the movement to generalize what's gonna happen. These are surging forward and then surging forward and I know this is gonna be a twist but searching for <laughs> I'll show you where it all ends up uh, once I'm done moving everything but the goal is to effectively kill those guys I gotta move this icon if you could actually move it for me just eight inches towards your general there yeah kind of right in as far as it can go what right yeah, I just want it to be mostly in range of them there. Okay. That's kind of where it ends up. Unfortunately, only this cluster of orcs here are within eight of it. So if they get removed as per casualties, it'll have no effect on them. That's okay, because it'll, it'll still put pressure on you anyways. Moving our skull crushers again, keeping them on the board, because that's where the board ends uh, mechanically for us here. And then having the Wrathmongers and the Exalted Deathbringer move up as well. We're going to scrap pretty heavily over here. And then uh, next up is them. So I push forward there and then everything else repositioned over here again acting as a screen i don't want to send like wave after wave uh, i sorry i want to send my guys wave after wave after wave not like one giant push and just keep our characters around our blood warrior bunker back here and then they'll be the last wave and i'm gonna go for a redeploy here after i move them yeah okay. so d6 inch move on them they get oh this is a good roll i can't believe you got one all right Oh, you're gonna move towards me? Yep. All right, fine. So that's where they redeploy. As for this stuff over here, gosh, I, they're gonna stay there. The Blood Warriors are gonna stay here because I don't wanna like give up the objective. I guess the Blood Warriors will push forward a little bit. But again, nothing's gonna join this fight. They are simply going to wait until that resolves naturally. They might get their trial of skulls. They just might take longer than the one turn that I was allowed to uh, shoot for it. Okay, that'll be it for movement. Again, no shooting, so we're right to the fun phase here. We're gonna declare some charges. I kinda wanna run this guy away, but I feel like that'd be very taboo for corn. Just gonna leave him right there in the middle, just awkwardly fighting, I guess. Let's go with the mighty skull crusher declaring a charge and <laughs> roll an outstanding two. But they get plus one of the charge. I'm gonna command point in anyways uh, from my general if he's in range. He is holy with an 18. It goes to about here. So they're going to re-roll that because I want obviously more than a double one. I'll take a six after the modifier instead. So we charge in like that, keeping our coherency because Thomas couldn't roll well enough to kill one model. Uh, I'm now, sorry I failed you, Luca. We make my life and job harder because of that. I, I, hope, I hope you know because now I have to keep everyone within two. Uh, but I get three of them ending up in range to do impact hits as they charge in. I do have to go reread the rule though on how that works. Let's do skull bugs first. On a six... Oh, negative one to hit. I'm too afraid to hit them. Well, too afraid to hit them efficiently. Well, now it is, the charge is nice because it's everything, a unit within three of my, three inches of my models. Unfortunately, I only have the three still. But every two up is a, I think every two plus is two mortal wounds. Every five up is more. It's the other way around. It's a two, two. These are one mortal wound and this is two mortal wounds. So I do four mortal wounds as I charge in. That's not bad. Kills two of them. And then uh, on to the Wrathmongers declaring a charge as well. They're going to go seven should be good that guy will just charge whoop we got bridges in the way but he'll make it with a seven hello I'm just charging in the three they got better reach now so we can utilize that and they're going to chain back here to the exalted deathbringer who can't uh not that he he doesn't get the protection because they're not battle line but he will get lookouts there still 
So that might help him out a little bit. Plus, he's not really much of a... I don't really care much about him. He's just a frontline fighter who's going to try and do some damage as a character. My question is, is like, are the 90-point characters worth it as good filler for killy units in corn, or is it better to save him the points and spending like the 190 on another unit of blood warriors or something, right? Like, because he doesn't do much other than just fight more. So he's kind of interesting, other than being kind of like a durable frontline character. Ah, setting out orders and stuff. I don't know, I'm rambling, don't mind me. Uh, we are going to charge next with these blood reavers. They get, they don't get plus one because they don't have a musician, but I do get a nine. To their doom! But they're gonna have a glorious little fight before they get in there. Uh, the, the, the idea is they do as much damage as they can before they go down, right? And then they get their murder strikes afterwards. They're gonna stay wholly within range of that uh, totem back there to get plus one wound, because they're not uh, fighting Gortide style over here, I don't believe. So that is it for my charges. That's it for my charges. Everything else ran, really. Uh, that guy didn't run. I'll try and charge with him. Maybe he'll get into the character. I rolled your dice, but the eight still fails. He needs, uh, he needs to get from here to here. You can blame Steve for those dice rolls. I will. Thank you, Steve. Uh, that is it. We're going to... Oh, you have to do... Uh, oh, it's when I go to fight. I, so we did the skull bug thing already there. That's when I go to fight with them, but we'll remember that skull bug thing happened. I do want to fight with them first, though, I think. These guys are negative one to hit. So I won't know that they're negative one to hit. So I'm going to all out attack these guys. Oh, we have to unleash hell. Yes. You still have to do that. Sorry. Yeah. Um, Who would you want to... Un you, you got so, three options. So from Gobsprack, oh, yeah. I'm going to use the command ability to unleash hell onto these guys. And because Gobsprack is doing it, there is no minus one to be hit. Uh, there's no minus one to hit. With the break. Oh, cool. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, yeah. That works for me. We're going to unleash hell and no negative to hit. So the twos, I guess? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, and we got a couple more wounds in there too, but they're enhanced. So that's three more wounds each, I believe. Uh, no, it's on fives that it would be mortal wounds. So these are still two more wounds apiece. Correct, because they're not near the sludge beast. That's exactly. Right, yeah. So that's then, four mortal wounds, and then... I need threes, I believe, to roll. Well, that's oh, definitely that's, wounds. That'll and those are a minus uh, one. I'll have no save at all there. Uh, so that's going to be eight damage. I'll have two reavers left after the only shell. <laughs> only melee weapons that trigger the murder strikes, but I, I wanted them to go in there charging anyways. So I'm probably not going to fight first with them now that there's... Uh, that many, uh, d that much damage on them. But maybe, maybe I still will. I actually don't know. Maybe I'll go to the honor duel instead. So who do I want? Probably just the banner and the champion, I guess. I wonder if just getting a little bit of damage on them before things go sideways would still be pretty beneficial. So I think, weirdly enough, I'm going to pick these guys to fight with. They don't have to pile in because they're wholly within eight of the Wrathmongers on the other side here, and they're wholly within 16 of the Blood Secrator. So it's going to be three attacks each for the champion into these uh, Manscrew Bolt Boys. I wonder, do I want to all out attack here? I think I kind of do, because I... Oh, you get to do the skull bug thing first. Right. Bugs! Nope. No, there's no monsters or anything nearby. Um... Oh, okay. it has to be near the monster. Yeah. I, yeah, this monster is even scarier. Okay, so I get my normal to hit rolls. I'm not going to all out attack here, just because I don't... Okay, good. There's no threes in there. Threes to wound, because I'm near the banner? Well, near-ish. That's two! I ran one. Just one each. No save Wait. at all, eh? No save. I'll take it! That's one less man bolt boy. And that's all I got. That's my first attack. That just goes to show how much I respect the rest of your fighting. Uh, these guys could be scary. Uh, they could do quite a bit of mortal wounds. I'm hoping they don't, but I'm just kind of relying on Thomas' rolls. <laughs> I'm literally banking on I, the I, crap. I, You know what? I'm not offended by that comment. It's, <laughs> that's a fact. This is a tactical decision based on that fact alone. I don't want to just want to do the hot yeah. fight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, put me in a pickle here. So I'm going to do my pile in. Oh, okay. We'll, we'll show you what it looks like afterwards. These are always sloppy. Yeah. We piled them in a little bit. It's a little sloppy because I got that one reaver in there. Technically, these two guys wouldn't be fighting, but they have the reaver they can attack. So those two are going to attack the reaver. And then we have these guys over here attacking the wrathmongers. And then the rest is into the mighty skull crushers, yeah. I suspect. Okay, yeah. perfect. Let's do the two into that guy first. Now they get plus one to hit because they are wholly within range of that Trogoth. Yep. Yeah. Who's, the Trogos are sad stories in the Cruel Boys. <laughs> Don't read it. Uh, that is, uh, he's dead. That's a blood tie point. He got killed by a venom encrusted weapon. And these four were the ones in the uh, Wrathmongers. The yep. rest are me attacking the Skull, Mighty so, Skull Crushers. Be will be eight attacks. Looking for those sixes. Oh, he got three of them. Not bad, not bad. So that's six mortal wounds there. It should only be one each. There's no monster near them for the extra. Oh, right, right. Yeah. It's, yes, it's right. the damage. It's one damage, yeah. And uh, I need force to hit, so those will fail. And I need force to wound. Don't hurt me. One. One wound. No I owe you a save. My save is going to probably fail. I think there are only five up, so I'm taking three damage for sure. And probably one more. I'm going to say that... Hmm. 
that guy there is going to die. But I don't have someone else pile in there, so I'm just going to take that guy out of here. Just for the ease of it, because they're all going to pile in that direction yeah. anyways. And I'm going to put a wound on this guy back there. And then the guy that died there gets to do his murderous strikes. And 11 remaining attacks in the Mighty Skull Crushers. Uh, plus the champion will be 23 attacks. And you're looking for sixes. Okay, you got a few in there. You got about the average-ish, so I made a bad gamble there, but I shouldn't do too much damage to my Mighty Skull Crushers. threes to hit. Threes because of the, the, the contraption nearby. Yeah. And fours to wound. So we're taking five mortal wounds. And then a few saves here as well. That one will fail. This is a three down here. No red, so these are two ups. Oh, you don't get through their mighty skull crush armor, but I do. Uh, the venom does. So that's five mortal wounds. That's gonna die. And then uh, two more wounds to allocate. So we might as well go back here, I suppose, right? Boom. The one who got brought down over there, he's gonna do his uh, murderous strike against them. Uh, oh, he does murder you for one entire mortal wound. All right. And obviously, that mighty skull crusher is too far away to murder a strike back. So my next pick. The most logical one is over in the honor duels. This is the one, this is where I get them dead. I have to figure out how far I can pile in here. One thing I did forget to do is I'm gonna cheat again a little bit. I move that guy a little bit further forward, staying outside of three, just so I can uh, get a more wiggle room on my uh, extra attack from this unit here. All that means is this little triangle just rotates around a little bit, staying with an eight there. I just get one more guy fighting. Be three, four, five, six dudes attacking. Should be a total of 13 attacks hitting on four. Oh wait, no, these are river blades. These hit on threes. And then, uh, I guess just fours, right? Oh, we gotta do skull bugs. Uh, I'll take out a few of those hits if you roll the six. I don't no. have to, okay. No minus one to wound, so I am just wounding on fours. So I got... Oh. I'll count that as a, that's a six. Oh, okay, no. still good, all the same. I appreciate it though. Three saves, six up. I, Wait, dude, do you have a rend on this? Not these guys, no? they don't have a rend. Okay, so six up save. Oh, I do kill two. Take that, Grotz, and the honor duel continues. You might as well go right back with them. Uh, they can all pile in and strike back. There's seven of them, so it should be... That's just one attack each, I guess, right? Uh, yeah. th there should be nine, eight, eight dice because of the guy... The champion. Yeah. yeah. And then sixes are good? Yeah. Oh, I see. No, oh, two sixes. That's two more hits. I think they automatically hit. The score, yeah. Yeah, so, and then four is now it's fives to wound. Yeah. Five wounding rolls to make. One. Six up save. Oh. Oh, who do I lose? Oh. Murder strike. He does not murder. <laughs> the power of the 80 points, 80 point units is showing over here. It's just kind of back and forth now. It's my pick. I'll go with the Wrathmongers. Technically where that one guy would pile in and the other guy would end up right there. So they have two inch reach. They're all going into the gut rippers. May have forgotten about the blood fury rule, uh, targeting them, but uh, I'm not too worried about it. It's a new rule on the Wrathmongers I was not aware of. When they get attacked, if you roll any ones to hit them, you take a mortal wound instead. But there's only a couple guys attacking, so shouldn't have mattered too much. Now, big squad getting hit by like 30 attacks. That's kind of cool. They have quite a bit of attacks. Uh, these are threes to hit and threes to wound. This is, uh, they're actually plus one wound because they're fighting for that objective. So twos to wound. So you're going to have a total of six at run one. Run to one. I need sixes. Aha. I destroyed three of them because one's wounded. Um, two. And I'll take three. Kill a boss is up next. He could do some shenanigans. Ah, uh, never mind. Looking at it, he can't quite get his reach against these guys. Even if he goes butt to butt, he wouldn't get within one. Yeah. Sadly. So he's gonna put his attacks into the reavers. Are we doing his spear first? Yeah. I'm hitting on uh, threes. They got him. They're dead. They got the six. That's a blood type point. Got my murder strikes back at him. He takes one mortal wound right back. And five wounds remaining. We're getting there. Uh, that was your pick. I will go with my Mighty Skull Crushers. And uh, I'm just getting the three out front attack. Uh, yeah, that's it, because this guy, that's where he can't pile in over here, because we'll be off the board. So just my three in the front attacking, because they only have uh, two inch reach. Then the Skull Bugs would have hit them earlier, so I'll go ahead and all out attack them to try and counteract it. Go down to two command points. So four is to hit with the plus one, negative one, because of the Skull Bugs, which is huge for you. It's only got three hits. In fact, that was a... As much as I'm making fun of your rolls, I'm just as bad sometimes. Two swoon because we're fighting for an objective we care about. Now, Ren two, one damage each. Uh, that's going to kill one and a half of dudes. And then we're going to try and get him with our brazen hose. So that'll be nine attacks on threes because the plus one, minus one. And then two swoon because we're fighting for an objective. Uh, three at no rend. Fives. One damage, okay. which finishes so that good. guy up. Okay, there's one guy here. Okay, so I killed the guy back there, put the wound on him, then he died. Uh, that is it for my Skull Crusher attacks. 
Well, that would be it for combat in general as well. I don't believe we have too much else to do. I don't have... I'm going to roll for those... Wrathmongers lost the guy. They're okay. And then... I didn't... I don't have to roll for any of my guys leaving over here. How many of these guys died? Um, I lost a total of six guys, if I'm not... All right. Uh, five, five guys. All right, well, that's not too much now. They can't inspire because of the icon nearby. Right. But at least he will only make one guy flee if I fail Battle Shock. Oh, is that a thing he does? Yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. So... Oop. So you fail, and, and I'm just gonna lose one guy. Yeah, so one guy's gonna run. I have to double check his rule compared to the bleeding icons rule and see which one how they interact because that's interesting. Wow, his uh, what's that rule called? It's the uh, all part of the plan rule for the killer boss. Also, uh, whenever a unit fails the battle shock check, only one model will ever flee, and then the bleeding icon says uh, once a unit within eight inches flees, uh, you roll a d6, and then oh nothing would have happened anyways. Uh, then d3 more guys run away. But they do flee. His rule completely counteracts the bleeding icon, and any time a unit fails that battle shock check, the bleeding icon goes away because it's supposed to like make more things run away than disappear. Right. Bravery five on them. They lost a guy. You're good. Good. Excellent. And I will bravery here. The hobgrots in the corner over there. They lost what two or three? Uh, I lost two, two this round. All right. So they are going to be plus four. That's a six in total. Yeah. So I lose two guys. The bravery four. Bravery four. <laughs> two more run. Excellent. The honor duo swings in my favor. Boop boop. The, um, them only having one guy run away was, uh, quite good. That means my battle tactic does whiff, but it's all good. Doing just fine, all other things considered. I did lose a Reaver over there. I am going to be okay at Bravery 5. They're Bravery 6 with their Icon. And, uh, that is it. So, scoring, I'm on the middle. Sorry, I'm on my objective and the middle. So I do get two points from the middle because I have a champion there now. Right. With the, the Blood Secretor. And then I don't control that one. That one's still yours. So that is going to be three points for the Blades of Corn as we go into turn two for the Cruel Boys. And this is kind of where we're at. <laughs> Total of five points. I'm, I've got a low scoring game over here against uh, Thomas's two. And three Blood Tithe. All right, so for my battle tactic uh, this turn, I'm taking all part of the plan, and ideally <laughs> everything I have on the field, including my general, has to be within 12 of enemy models. Get stuck in. Yes. Yeah. Nice. So I'm going to go for the command. Come on. Got it. Five. I'm going to... Yeah. Oh, you put it on Scumdrek? I'm going to put it on uh, Gobsprack. Gobsprack, sorry. Yeah. Scumdrek's over there, yeah. I am going to go for a recovery on my Ritualist. We'll pass. And the Ritualist is going to heal. Oh, oh three. Back very up to nice. Four. Excellent. All right, we're going to put the tox the elixir on them. Yeah. And now I'll go into casting some spells. Um, I'm going to start with him, uh, my Swamp Color. And I'm going to try to go for the Black Pit. Okay. So I'm going to go for the, the Black Pit and... Uh, actually, I think I could target these guys here. If you have the range, yeah, it's yeah. like 12 inches. You should, though, that one model is going to be within 12 there. So they can be targeted by it, and you're going to roll a three. I don't think there's much you can do about that. Nope. <laughs> no, no, no. Other than just contemplate sadness. I I'm suppose. just going to go home now. <laughs> so the Black Pit's a pretty effective spell against the Skull because it summons literally like a black swamp underneath them. And like the heavier their armor is, the more damage they take because it like drags them down. Exactly. So not quite happening here. So I'm going to try to cast uh, the Choking Mist from Gobsprack here. Uh, basically, I need a, I pick a spot within 24 inches and I need a 7 to cast. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh. Does he have like a reroll? He's got something to do with magic, or is it dispelling? It's for dispelling. Or I'm binding or whatever. That yeah. I can roll three d6, and then I cause you mortal wounds to the, whoever I dispel. Right. But right. unfortunately, I, I can't do that. <laughs> Nor can you roll higher than a no. three on two dice. Uh, oh, man. What do you want to do for your second spell? Because um, that, that spell you're about to cast is a nasty spell, I remember. I can't remember what it does, but I remember I, disliking it. I pick a spot, and everything, including my own guys, anything within that spot will get... Uh, one from minus one to their attacks. That's not the worst for you. Yeah. Yeah. If mm. I rolled for it, it would be great, but <laughs> <laughs> you just put it like behind my lines or something. It, yeah, so like this. Exactly. exactly. That oh. would be the, I, the perfect thing. Oh, um, gosh. I'm going to go for the next one would be sneaking my asthma, which if I'm successful, a monster could get a free move. Gotcha. 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 Okay. Well, I might as well try to. I only have one unbind here, really. So an eight. That will go off. Corn loves it. Well, I got an 11, though. No magic for you. Sorry. <laughs> You're not a nice person. No. Okay. Hey, well, the dice are nice. <laughs> yeah. It's the dice. This dude. That will finish the hero phase right to movement. This monster is going to move right there. I 
guess that works. Do I want? I'm trying to think of like what I need. I have uh, all the attack, all the defense. I got three command points. I could do all the attack, all the defense. I could do an inspire if I want to, or I could redeploy something over here. Hmm. And I didn't really want to redeploy, so we're going to have these uh, gut rippers squeeze through that little gap I have open there. And uh, that's where they're going to clash. I'm not, not, again, I'm not really too sure what I want to do or where I want to do it. So I'm just going to save the command point. And uh, it's like a hot mess right now. Like, this is like madness over here. So it's, <laughs> it's kind of hard to gauge, like, what I want to happen. I not. don't even know. That, like, I, I'm just going for things and going to see what happens. Uh, yeah, exactly. My plan is completely out the window now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to save up my blood tithe points for something cool. Maybe I'll summon something. Maybe I'll use some apopletic frenzies. I don't know. I'm willing to help you try to summon a bloodthirster. There we go. We'll if get you that. haven't had that happen yet, I want to be no, the first guest close. to have that ten. happen to. It's 10 blood tithe points, so it's quite a bit. Ah, we're getting there. We're at three. Yeah. Grob, go, gobsprack? Yeah. Gobsprack just flies right there. Nothing too ambitious, not flying over here. Just yeah. going to fight from over there. Uh, that should probably conclude movement because you don't want to move with the, uh, the No, because then there. I go from normally hitting on twos to fours. Yeah, And then exactly. one shot instead of two. So it's better for me to just stay put right. and have my artillery battery here. Second thought, we are going to move the man skewers a little bit because we do want that hasty shot in range. Uh, the bigger pieces of artillery definitely don't want to use the hasty shot because there's like no bonus to it. It's just a strictly it's worse just shot. It's garbage. These guys get at least two shots with their uh, crossbows before yeah. uh, the, uh, before the one shot. That's a little more accurate. You only really want the mortal wounds as well, right? So Exactly. Uh, did you want to move the shaman to keep up with them so we can uh, boost them up next turn? Yeah, I'm going to run the shaman. Running the shaman. Hello. An extra five. Excellent. Boop. I think I'm going to use my auto defense here as they're going to get, take a volley of crossbow bolts. So this guy's going to use the all-out attack. Uh, With his heroic leadership? Yeah. yeah. All right, so there's threes to hit now. Bloop. Oh, we got a, a six. Oh, but they work on fives now. Yes. Yes, that's quite good. That's very good. Everyone there is a dead uh, dude because they're two wounds each. Yeah. And then the threes do hit still. Yeah. Threes to wound. Oh, three more. Rend one. Back to their three ups. Okay, so we still do lose four though from the Venom. We, of those four, we might as well lose. I uh, want to keep you. So we'll lose you, 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 and then you, I suppose. Yeah, that's what we'll lose. Oh, but then that guy's exposed. Huh! Wait, never mind. You're right. Yeah, Thomas just pointed out he's also near the other battle line unit. So we're probably okay. We're definitely, probably, maybe kind of okay. <laughs> After that volley, we're going to have one of these two big pieces of artillery fire sideways yeah. into the Skull, the mighty Skull Crusher. So one shot on a two. Twang. That's a hit. hit. No no venom, though. No. Nope. And then does it wound? Bop, 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 bop. It does. Yep. I'm going to roll a die. I fail my armor save. And now we have to figure out what the damage of this thing is. Yep. We have to figure out how much damage this weapon does by rolling dice equal to the wound's characteristic of the unit, which is five in this case. Five. Every five up will increase the damage of the shot. Oh! So it's five damage a shot. Uh, because it's two plus the roll. It's two plus one for each yeah. Yep. That just skewers the. That kills one completely. It's a beautiful shot. Boosh. Boom. So he gets taken out, and then that's still you know two more damage elsewhere. Uh, that guy's non-command, so we'll put it on him right there. You yeah. still have one more. Yeah. So the same thing. This guy will shoot into that squad. Twang. Two's to hit. Hit. Barely. And does a wound. Oh, there's that one again. I think this is, oh, it was the other way around, but you always yeah. got one last time too. Okay. Well, it's still got one. Though. That's pretty good. Yeah. That will bring into charging. Yep. Uh. I'm going to start with the Gut Rippers here are going to charge into your uh, Reavers. All right, Gut Rippers rolling up a charge, and we're going to see... Well, five's probably good enough. Yep. So they pile in. All of them are going to be able to attack because uh, they got good reach on their weapons, so it'll be 21 attacks. Yep. And now Gobsprack here is going to declare a charge against these Reavers. Oh, yeah, declaring charges. That's right. <laughs> or <laughs> not actually, yet. well, it'll be a multi-charge if, if it's high enough. No, you don't have to declare it in Sigmar. You just yeah. roll it and figure it out. Bloop. Seven. Seven. We used that to fly over the objective and land on this side over here. But you would be engaging this guy if you're okay with that. No, I guess you can just like stay a little bit further away if you don't want to. Never mind. Scumdrick is going to charge next. All right. Charging. Uh, five. five. Oh, good enough. He's going to charge in there. That way he has the option to go fight them later. Staying at three away from them for now. That way he has the option to fight them later if he needs to. We're going to go ahead and stomp over here from Scumdrick. Yep. On a two. That is a three. He'll deal. D3 more wounds. For two. two. Crush two in the main. Not again, not a melee attack. I am just going to lose... It doesn't stop his pile in at all, really. I'd have to lose, like... No, not even at all. If I lose more than me, he just goes that way. Anyway. So I can't really stop his pile in, so I might as well stop the attacks. It's not even going to stop their attacks, really. I'm just going to lose from over here. All the same. Don't need the banner. And we're going to go ahead and roar from Scumdrek. 
or that's good enough. Yeah, the five yeah. works. So no command abilities on uh, them. Yep. All right, now we're on the actual fighting phase. And then we are going to fight first over here. Yep. Um, as long as this guy moves here. So I'm going to put four guys, four, four guys into the Wrathmongers, and the rest of the unit is going to fight into the Skull Crusher. Yeah, the Mighty Skull Crushers. Mighty eh? Skull Crushers. They're Skull Crushers who are mighty. <laughs> it's funny because the demons don't get a fancy uh, adjective. They're just Blood Crushers. <laughs> They're not mighty. They're not weak. They're not thirsty. They're not mediocre. They're just <laughs> blood crushers. All right, so from these four gut rippers into the wrathmongers, I'm looking. Who got two more wounds and a few hits? Uh, oh, actually, I'll hit. Yeah. And fours. Ooh, four more. Gonna be fives. So I save one. I take uh, three damage and two mortals. Yeah. Which kills two in loft. That'll kill this one who cannot do a murderous strike. And then I'll lose, I guess, this one here. And then, uh, but he, he'll murder strike in a second. Yep. All right. So I'm looking for ideally sixes. Lucky there are only a couple sixes for more wounds. That, that will finish one off. And then. Need fours. There we go. We got two mortals and we got five wounds. So two ups. We're good, but we take our two mortals. Let's kill off this skull crusher who is mighty. And I'm going to do two murder strikes at you. Because two guys are really mad. And they're going to try and cut you. <laughs> oh, I take two mortal wounds, scum. Best bet, assuming my Wrathmongers live over there, is to fight over here with these Reavers who are going to pile in. Try and get some damage on a uh, dumb bird before dumb bird does a uh, dumb er bird thing. So you probably want to end up there. And you're going to come up that way. And I'm going to have to do like a dumb zigzaggy thing here. I am going to attack you with five of my Reavers. Uh, the other four back. One, two, three, four, six. No. Yeah, six. Those six, these four aren't fighting. There we go. That's yeah. how it works. Threes to hit with them if I all that attack, which I'm going to do here. So I want to do some damage to the bird. I would love to do some damage to the bird here. Uh, threes to hit the bird. I got some threes in there. And then because we are fighting near a totem, threes to wound. All right, we got three saves. Rend one. Didn't really max that much. Hey, and you got your ward. Destiny! Six. All right, Destiny uh, takes three damage. Three damage? Yeah. All right, next up, we have the, the killer boss on his uh, weird cat swamp thing attacking my Wrathmongers. He just has to pile in a little bit, but that's no problem. Yeah. Let's get within an inch. Boop. And a strike in time. So four attacks. With his weird spear. Oh, we've got uh, some more wounds. And I assume the three is hit, yeah. almost assuredly. And boop. What's uh, the rend on those? This is a good question. I believe it is uh, minus uh, one. Why well, get no save at all. Uh, how much damage? Uh, we're looking at two apiece. Well, then that is going to be all dead. They're both dead. Uh, don't even have to worry about the mount. I am going to murder strike both of them towards uh, the boss. Uh, so that's going to be two of them. You take one mortal wound right back. <laughs> and then I get a blood tithe point because you kill my wrathmongers and I lose the attack over there. Next up, we'll fight with the blood reavers. That makes kind of the most sense. Not really getting much value out of them. I got three attacking scum drek and two attacking uh, gut rippers there. So I'll do the gut rippers. That's the champion in the corner they're fighting. So these are fours to hit. And unfortunately, we're too far away from our totem. So forced to... Oh, look at that. Three wounds of red one on them. So they have six ups. Aha, I kill one and a half. That's embarrassing. Imagine being killed by a guy with an axe and no armor. I'm just kidding, Mr. Blood Reaver. I know you'd kill me in real life too. <laughs> Here's a question for you, viewer. Would you, the viewer, could you take a Blood Reaver in combat? You personally. Do you think you could take one of those guys? He's running at you. Jacked. Probably more jacked than any dude you've ever seen. <laughs> with that axe. Blood is a heck of a drug. So, uh... <laughs> No. I, I don't think I got it. I think that guy runs me down like uh, the chump I am. Which movie star, like Schwarzenegger or the Stallone or Bruce Willis, who could take him? Oh. Who, get, who has the most fighting experience out of all? Okay, are they, like a, are they an actor in a movie? Or are they, just the, the, are they like playing a character and they have the skills of that character? Or are they just the actor? I don't know. I think that, that, that sounds like a discussion over a beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? Probably. Uh, okay, well, maybe... Uh, maybe. If, pick, uh, let's go with a character that they've played. I would say any of their characters probably have a pretty good chance. Because they're also warriors, right? Schwarzenegger as Conan the Barbarian, definitely. Oh, definitely has a chance. Definitely. Yeah. Conan's like a character. Yeah. Definitely, like a, like a Dark Oath chief. John McClane. Just throwing someone off a building. Could. Yeah, he could probably scrap. He knows how to scrap, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The actors themselves, maybe, actually, if they have some fighting experience. These guys are oh, these guys are pretty 
I wouldn't want to fight these guys. But hey, no. you know what? Just g- it gives you an idea. Like you laugh at these guys, but the scale of them into reality, these guys are murderers, man. Yeah. But they're they're like the lowest of the low in Sigmar, which is kind of funny. Yeah. Well, not really the lowest of the low. You have like s- s- clan rats, I guess, in the game still. Those guys are kind of weak. <laughs> zombies. I wouldn't want to fight a zombie. No. I'd not magic zombies. No, not like, not a magical zombie. No, 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 no. yeah, exactly. For the actual swings. Enough rambling. The polys. One hit. No wound, I don't get the plus one. Then you're just gonna hit me right back with the gut rippers. I'm gonna yep. pile them in and uh, probably kill all my reavers. Now, one thing I will say before we resolve that attack, I don't wanna forget the rule twice on the Wrath Mongers. You did roll a one to hit me on your right. big guy. Roll the mount as well to see if you get any ones. Because if you roll ones to hit the Wrath Mongers, you take a mortal wound back. Uh, you're good. Just one mortal wound then from the guy rolling it. He rolled a one, a three, three, and a six. So that would mean I'm down to three, right? Yeah. yeah okay. That's to represent the, the blood fury that kind of surrounds the uh, wrath mongers that affects the enemy. It makes the enemy attack recklessly. So any ones, is uh, uh, they, they kind of slip up and take a damage in the in the, the epic duel they're involved in or in epic combat. Okay, so let's kill these blood reavers. <laughs> so gut rippers into the reavers here. These are fours to hit. Sixes are good. Uh, sixes would be uh, three mortal wounds too because of uh, within big range guys. of scum drag. Nice. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, what's the range of it to the beast? Is it yeah, so it's wholly within 12. It adds one to the uh, the venom encrusted weapon roll. So it'll be two each, but not three. So we have six more wounds so far. I only have a couple guys left. And then actual hit rolls. This is very fitting. For so the... this is uh, one wound. wound. Six. So I take seven wounds from them. Are they? So I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. One guy's left. The champion, I guess. Might as well leave this guy over here, I guess. Uh, because I won't be able to pile. Like, I'm already in you, base contact with you, so I can't. You can, In Sigma, you can, which oh, is the right. nice thing about okay. it. Yeah. Uh, you just have to stay as close to the unit as you were. Right. So I'm going to leave. Because he gets a pilot anyways into them. Yeah. So I guess we'll leave everything. So these guys are going to... He's not going to... So that's three strikes against him, and then three strikes against them. This guy doesn't strike anything. He just dies. So the three against... Oh! That was against them. So that's two mortal wounds, and then three murder strikes at Scumdrek. These are murderers. Roll that. Two. So two mortal wounds there and two mortal wounds over there. All right. From them, but the Reavers dying. The Reavers are, I love the Reavers in this Blaze of Corn book now. Like little, little, little like uh, kamikaze units. Do as much damage as they can. Muddy up the battlefield as much as they can. Do as much damage as they can. 13 wounds left on Scum Direct there. Uh, do you want to pie? Oh, I guess I get to go next, actually. Yep. Mm, who do I want to go with? We'll keep the honor duel until the end there, as, uh, as uh, per as tradition, discussed. I guess. And then I will fight with my mighty skull crushers over here. This guy's gonna scooch over that way a little bit, getting to the edge of the battlefield. He's gonna wiggle his bum out of the way, and yeah, this guy's gonna bring it in. Forgot about skull bugs for the other reaver attacks, which is fine, because it's just reavers. They've only been really doing damage on their death. Yeah. But let's remember it for here. Skull bugs, negative one hit. That's bad with that glaive. Ah! I will all out attack here. Forced to hit because of the skull bugs. Okay, that's okay. Yeah, that stops three hits. That's pretty good. And then two soon because we're fighting for that objective. Five saves at rent two just kills two and a half. Then I guess I should probably remember to attack with my hooves. And boop. I don't think I've all that attacked yet, have I? It's like now randomly, uh, we've been rambling a lot and just like getting into discussions off camera. So it's been a while since this combat phase has actually started. Yeah. For you guys watching, it's been like a relatively okay amount of time. It's probably been like 45 minutes for us <laughs> talking off camera a lot. Oh, <laughs> uh, we got two wounding hits from the hooves at no rend. So you just have your four, five of saves on your uh, gut rippers. Two more damage. Boom, boom, boom. I'll take it. I'll take this and put it on here. Works for me. From there, we come to Scumdrek. He's going to pile in around and get kind of close to those Wrathmongers getting within an inch of them. He should be able to get within yeah. an inch, no problem. That was yeah. part of the charge there, yeah. yeah. It's just uh, finagling it. We're going to put everything into the Wrathmongers here. So everything's going to attack the Wrathmongers here. So okay. we're going to start off with a spiked snatch a stick. That's his fancy stick up there. Four hitting. attacks, hitting on threes. All right, don't roll once. That's a mortal wound. That's actually going to be three mortal wounds. Fine. That's fine. So I take three mortal wounds, you take one mortal wound so far. It's a mortal wound game. And so that's all. That's the only damage you do to each other is mortal wounds. <laughs> and then there's two wounding rolls to make on a three plus. Ooh, nice. Which I make it. These are minus one. Ooh, I have six up against that. My armor protects against neither. Those are two damage then? Yes. Yeah. Oh, geez, I messed up the train. All right, so that's going to be a total of seven damage on me. And then one mortal wound on you. And the rest. Next, we have the Grasping Talons. So there's six attacks because I'm still not at my next bracket. Yep. 
So I have six attacks, and I'm hitting on threes. Sixes are good. Ooh. Nothing there for the sixes. You take the one mortal wound. Threes to wound. Threes to wound. That is three wounds. Three. Uh, minus one. Oh, back to six up saves on Wrathmongers. Make none of those. Are those two each as well? Yes. All right, so that's another six damage. We'll get the big bite attack as well. Yeah, so it's one attack hitting on a three. Oh, that's mortal wounds. That's, yeah, so uh, the damage is a rent, like it's a, it's a D3 plus whatever damage, so we'll have to, how, how, how would that be D3 plus five? Five mortal wounds because of the Venom Encrusted Weapon so trait. the D3 roll. So oh. six, another six though. Oof, okay, well he's actually kind of destroying me here. <laughs> and the Thrashing Tail's up next. So two attacks hitting on threes. Okay. And I need a two to wound. Rand of two? Rand of two. All right, no stay, how much damage? Two damage. All right, two more damage then. Okay, well, grand total of 21 damage. Um, you kill my unit. My unit is completely wiped out, and you take two mortal wounds. Right. Uh, I have to lash out with my guys. Of the five of them dying, this one's not in range to do a murderous attack. Took two mortal wounds plus another one. And right. these guys are all dead. And that's a blood type point. Excellent job. How many wounds does he have left? He's got 10 left. 10 left? I can deal 10 wounds. We got 10 wounds on him, 11 wounds on him, three wounds on him. It's, it's, it's a hell of a show here. Yeah. Okay. Well, and Gobstrike, I think I have not swung with him yet. He does get to fight still, yeah. Uh, my pick, I'm going to go into the honor duel here. Yes. And attack with these Reavers and see if we can't clear up. What do we got? Just five dudes left here. I don't have Wrathmongers anymore for extra attacks, so I might as well pile them all in. Okay, we got three, four, five, six, seven of them attacking. Champion is in there now. Yes. He's been in there for a bit now. All right, honor duel. Let's see if my 80 point unit does better. These are, oh, God, we got to do skull bugs before I forget. Right. Skull bugs. Uh, Nope. And wounding on force. Aha! Oh! Okay, whoa! Okay, all right. Perhaps that trial of skulls will be complete soon enough. Seven saves at no rend. Seven. Six is. <gasps> I think I killed them all. You killed them. I did it! That's a blood tithe point, and I win the honor duel! All right, my 80 point unit, strictly better than your 80 point unit. This one matchup is proof of that, not anecdotal whatsoever. I don't four Four rounds of combat <laughs> to kill. 10 Hobgrots, I think I win this one. What do you mean? You, you could have killed me right back. You just didn't. No, man, well, I still think I won. <laughs> then we're trying to stay outside of that guy's three inch aura. And then Gobsprack attacking the Reavers. That's what they're called. Yep. Reavers. Because they Reeve. <laughs> Gobsprack is going to swing next into the Reavers over here. We're going to start with his two attacks from his Bog Bark staff. Nice, starting with that. Excellent. Hitting on threes. Yeah, you know what? Did. Good enough. He went to staff school. Look at that. Wounding on threes. All right. Ren, no, Ren no. one? Ren one. How much damage is that bad boy doing? It's D3. Roll it up. I got no save. Boop, boop, boop. Two. For two. Two dead so far. Well, I'm just going to lose these two. They're too far away to really influence much, so they're not going to strike back. I'm just going to actually remove them. Everyone else should be within three, though. Sure. Right, next, we're going to go with his beak and flesh tearing talons. Ugh. We're Not my flesh. We need five. We get five attacks and hitting on fours. This bird's... Uh, Let me reroll that one. It's not flat. You, no, no, you want oh, no, oh, no. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. You keep it. Sorry, it's a good one. <laughs> I always have a, I have a weird rule of reels. Don't mind me, guys. Uh, That's all so good. These, three, these two miss. I need a three to wound. <laughs> I assume there's Ren there. It's minus one. All right. Gets right through my bare chest. And it's flat two damage. <gasps> not two Reavers. Uh, does he have anything else going for him? He's got two more weapon profiles to attack with. All right. Here we go. So What's we got the next? Stinger. One attack. Hitting on a three. I don't even want to know where this thing Stinger is. Uh, it's right underneath his tail over here. You, it's a, oh, I do. You, yeah. Oh, it is right there. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Uh, so I hit on a three. I need a uh, two to wound. Okay. And how much uh, damage does it do? D6. D6. All right, roll it up. I have no save. Four. four. So Stinger's like, stab dead. Yep. Stab dead. Stab dead. You over there, stab dead. All right, so we're going to just lose. Actually, we'll keep you, I guess. You're the champion. We'll lose one, two, three, four. We got two left. Excellent. And next up, uh, we have the backup Stabba, the little <laughs> grot on his... Oh, yeah, he's got a little homie. Yeah. Hitting on fours. Uh, okay, the only thing is uh, this so thing. He's probably got a Venom Encrusted Weapon. That's one more wound to the other one. Does it connect? On a four plus? No. no. So one more guy dies. Blech. And then I have uh, seven murderous strikes against you. Murder! Take two more wounds. Six Destiny. Up board. Destiny says, no, nope. you meant to take those. Boom, beautiful. And that is uh, kind of all she wrote, I guess. Not really much else going on here for combat. So we need to do some battle shock. Like a heck of a lot of battle shock. So it's your turn. You have to do yours first if you have any. Uh, you have D3 
They did lose a couple over One, here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So lost, lost two, two guys. Okay. Boop. No, you're good. And then the other one was over here. Yeah. Lost quite a bit, but they can only ever lose one, yeah. so not too bad. Uh, so that just means one guy runs then, just because yeah. of the boss there nearby. Okay. Killed enough. Boop. Not too bad. He's already wounded, so it doesn't matter too much. And uh, me. I lost quite a bit. I lost... Uh, that guy's going to run. Uh, that guy's going to run. Two more blood tithe points, because it does count as them being destroyed. Yeah. They don't run. They just ax themselves in the face <laughs> and then bless Corn and thank him for it. And they can't fail. But I'll roll anyways just for the sake of it. And then I'll go double check, I suppose. Quite a bit of blood tithe points gained. They were at six. And uh, as for score, your battle tactic was get stuck in, which I think you are still accomplishing. Yeah. Because they're going to be within 12 of that guy. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. All right, so you scored battle tactics. I can start scoring battle tactics now. Yep. Thank you, Thomas, for playing the game a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna, uh, uh, we are going to go ahead and go on to the next battle round where it comes down to a priority roll. I like the position I'm in if I win the priority roll. Don't love it if I don't win the priority roll, but I win ties. Ba -ba 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 -ba. A two. Oh, no! My just desserts. <laughs> That's what I get. Uh, so, oh, wait. You could choose to go second if you wanted to. No, I think I want to. I, I think I need to try to kill you, as much as possible. I think and just you, try to leave. I try to leave three guys alive. A fair. minimum, a minimum of just three. Uh, no, a maximum of three guys alive. Excellent. All right. Well, this is currently where we're at. I just come to my attention that I forgot to tell you that uh, Thomas also gained uh, four victory points at the end of his turn, taking a glorious one point lead. That's because he controlled that objective in his home, the objective in the middle without a champion. And then obviously gave him the battle tactic. So we're gonna go on to the hero phase proper now. We get to choose a whole new fancy battle tactic. Oh yeah. Yeah. That guy's free to heal too, son of a gun. What do we think for battle tactic? I'm gonna go for an eye, uh, for an eye, for an eye. Because uh, you killed my Hobgrotz, yeah. and I want revenge for that. <laughs> yeah, because I won the honor duel. <laughs> yeah. Fair. I'll just take eye for an eye on my next turn. All fine. Right, then. That's fine. I'm gonna try a recovery on the big guy there. And uh, you do get to, you have to roll uh, your bravery though. So the five is not a great start. So roll me one more d6. You have to roll equal to or under your bravery. Ah, you definitely got on a six. Bravery seven. So he heals d3 wounds. Yep. So he's at three currently and he's going to go up to. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh, four. Okay. I'm going to go finest hour on my exalted deathbringer. That's what I'm thinking. Then I'm going to rally these guys here. I'm missing. Uh, it's going to cost me a command point. But I get to show off the Blood Secretor. If he rallies a unit, uh, he they rally on they add two to the roll. So they anything he rallies rallies on four. Okay. Which is why I really like that unit to hit a flank and then come in and get rallied after fighting a little bit back up to six easily enough. Uh, we are missing four dude. Right, stand back up for corn. Not two of them do. We're just gonna put them over there to, uh, to the unit. You know. So in the command phase, this guy is gonna give them the poison elixir to encrust their weapons. Even further. <laughs> further. Further. Have more venom. <laughs> more. Uh, and uh, then spell casting. Yeah, I'm gonna try again the <laughs> the black pit. Alright, roll it up. Seven to cast. Don't roll a three. You rolled two threes before. Can you do it again? Six. Six. I need a seven. <laughs> Ain't no magic out of this battlefield, baby. We got corn present. You're not the corn is not even doing anything. Oh, he's very present. Oh, he's all over. Sure. He can be corns everywhere. Uh, he's all around us. Inside of us. Mm, we love corn. Alright, uh scum drek. I'm or yeah. that's Grobsback. Grobsback. <laughs> Grobsback. I can't get their names. <laughs> so the next spell I'm gonna attempt to cast, hopefully get it works, is Choking Mist from Gobsprack. And I get that. Ooh. I finally cast a spell. Works. Uh, it gets. I need a seven, but I rolled an eight. What's that choking mist do? So that's the uh, where I pick up point twenty four inches on the on the oh, board, okay. and everything will get minus one to their attacks. Not that's their, pretty not, good. Not their attacks hit roll, but the, the actual attacks. attacks, the profile of the attacks. Yeah. yeah. You're gonna summon a choking mist from that point right there. Yeah. Hitting the mighty skull crushers, and my exalted deathbringer. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and do my Hatred of Sorcery. So Korn is maybe here, so the Exalted Deathbringer on a 5-up ignores the effect. He does. He's immune to it. And I get a Blood Tithe point. Nice. And then the Skull Crushers. <laughs> Thanks for the two Blood Tithe points, homie. I <laughs> Rewind back of it before when I said I want to help Luca summon a bloodthirster. I'm I, that's my duty to corn. <laughs> hey, there is a really cool choking mist right there. Yeah, exactly. Looks scary. It's right now. It's yeah. <laughs> Don't care. He's got one more spell to cast. Um, 
So the final spell from Gobsprack is going to be sneaking my asthma, and that's the I could give a monster a free move. Right. And an that will go off with an eight. Try and stop it. Ah, oh, keep the two. All right. Uh, the uh, you can have it. You nice. can have it. Nice, nice, nice. This guy here's going to move. Where's he going? Scumdrake is going to. Uh. I'm just going to kind of. Boop. Hello. Right there. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, okay, well, that makes what I wanted to do quite a bit harder, but we're still going to try and make it work. Is that it for the hero phase? That is it for the hero phase. So right. I'm going to go into the movement right now. Well, at the end of your hero phase, we're going to use one of our blood tie points. All right. We're going to use one for murder lust. I'm going to pick three of my units, and they all move D6 inches. And they can move into combat. This is where it's going to get interesting. I regret every decision. <laughs> now, the, th the nice thing is, there's not much you can do about it to, like, make you just have to hope I roll low. Yeah. So I'm going to choose these Reavers. Okay. I am going to choose these Blood Warriors, okay. and I'm going to choose that Exalted Deathbringer. So every one of those units moves D6 inches right now, and they can come within three inches of an enemy, thus engaging them. This is the most important one. I kind of want to roll pretty high here. Ah, three's not going to do it. Your spell moving him was big, because these guys are going to move over here and tie him up over here, thus he couldn't assault this area. Yeah. But I am going to use this to go over this way all the same and get more models on the objective. I'm not getting within three of him, sadly, so he's still able to charge. The big thing is you stop the enemy from charging. There's murder lusting over here. I would like for this guy not to get away or anything like that, so I'm gonna... These guys are gonna move four. They're gonna move into combat. So we'll move into combat there, and then the exalted Deathbringer is gonna move. Six, excellent. He's just gonna go, hello. Boop. Okay. I didn't know if it was better to go into the Bolt Boys or not. I don't know, we'll see. I'm just gonna keep it simple. He's gonna go for the, he's gonna be distracted by the character kill. He's gonna go for the, uh, kill. obviously killing characters is very cool for him. That's it, that's my, now we're on to moving phase proper. Okay, we're moving forward with the Bolt Boys to support yep. the boss. We got the Venom, uh, the, the Gut Rippers. Exactly, gut rippers. We'll and the Swamp Caller is moving up because I'm gonna see if I can snag you in my, Oh, he's got like a catcher thing as well. Yeah, it kind of makes really, sense. Not really, but it, you know what? We'll see what happens. He's got, he's kind of got one too. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's it for movement. Uh, yeah, I'm mm -hmm. gonna keep it as is. All right, then we're right on to shooting. All right, couple big boys yeah. sideways into the uh, muddy skull crushers. So this guy here on my left failed last time, and I'm gonna start with him this turn. See what <laughs> nice. happens. Okay. So sh shooting into the mighty skull crusher. So hitting on it. Okay. We're gonna just throw that guy into the trash. Next guy. Uh, yep. Okay. That's the... Uh, you got one. You get exactly one. One kill. That is it. How many points are they? Do you know off the top of your head? Uh, they're like 100 and something, 120 points, I'm going to say. <laughs> Maybe 100... I think they're like 180 points. Hey, you know what? In the right circumstance, they can carry it too. That's the worst part. Uh, yeah, I mean, the potential, the ceiling is so high that I'm <laughs> never going to hit that ceiling. <laughs> we got these. These guys will shoot into here. So they did move, so I will have to use the hasty shot. So that would be two. That's ideal, though. That's kind of yeah. what you want. Every five up is going to do pretty much kill one of my guys here. Yep. So looking for fives. Do we kill four? Stop it. Boom. Boom. I don't care about the banner. Boom. And I even all the defense them too. <laughs> wound rolls, I need threes. Okay, one wound. Man, that was a crazy roll too, because everything but one hit. Oh, I make my save. Okay, well I was expecting less fives and sixes and more of the actual hits themselves. I still have all my heroes, I guess, and some Blood Warriors going. So it's yeah. charging. Where do you want to start? Are you going to keep him in combat? Eight? Oh, I guess we already moved past those. Yeah, yeah. So He's no coward. I'm going to start with these Gut Rippers here, charging. Well, again, don't have to declare it, but they'll be charging. I'm going to go three. They do not get that charge. No, they won't be able to do it within half an inch. Right. Gonna so I'm going to command reroll the charge here, and watch me later on roll double ones on Scum Drag. <laughs> yeah. All right, forward to victory from the Gut Rippers. They're going to roll a seven, seven, which is much better. Yeah. That's them charging in, and then we have... And like I said, gun, uh, uh, Skull Drek. Drek. Here's the double ones. To be calling it. Ooh, there we eight. go. Oh, he's good to go. Obviously, Scum Drek wants to fight from over here. Fine. And the Marsh Crawler is going to try to go into your Deathbringer. All right, bring it on. Boom, 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 boom. Yep, that's a six. Hello. Bob Sprack is going to stomp on my warriors on a two. Yep, yep. D3 mortal wounds. That is a dead warrior, eh? Ah, da, 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 There's three da, wounds da, a piece? Da, 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 da. No, and, and someone's going to be wounded as okay. well. Okay. Yeah. This is not the pacing I thought they were going to go. Okay, and then we have a roar? Yeah. Roaring. 
Good. No command abilities. Excellent. Now we fight. We're gonna hit up the cruel boy wall because we're gonna fight with Gobstrack first, and he gets to be the—he's like a war master. He, he's the general in addition I, to the well, pick no. ones. So, he's my general. Yeah. But I just want to fight with Gobstrack first before I call the wall with this guy. Oh, is he not a general in any form? No. He's oh, a named character, okay. and I can't give him a general. Ha, <laughs> fair, yeah. So we're gonna fight with Gobstrack first before we call the wall. Yo, though, I like it. All right, why, why go with Gobstrack first? Uh, I need to redeem how bad he was last <laughs> round, so... <laughs> All right, fine. Madness has become this battle report. So we're going to start with his staff first. Uh, it's two attacks, hitting on threes. Good start. Uh, I need threes to wound. That is a One wound at to a four up. They're going to pass it. Sorry, the wound is not on the special weapon. It's on this guy here. There we go. And then uh, he's got many other attacks. Yes. Still in this top bracket is the other attacks. So I have the beak. Uh, so there's five attacks hitting on fours. Okay, we got two hits. Wounding on threes. Rend of one, I believe? Yep. Well, that's a fail. How much damage? Flat two. Ooh, dead and a wound. Next is the stinger. We got the stinger. So it's one attack hitting on threes. Oh, it misses. We dodge it. We see what it did to the reverse. <laughs> Stabba, two attacks hitting on fours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and hit, wounding on four. No rend on this. Uh, there we go. We make the save. And then uh, that's it. Yep. All right, my murder strike back at you. They have a rule for it. Freak out. No respite. You take a mortal wound back, Gobsprack. Destiny, you have a six up ward. Yes. Uh, no. Nope. Three, nope. One more damage. Fine. I am going to go. Oof. This is uh, pretty important to go with these dummies over here. But it's also pretty important to go with my Exalted Deathbringer. I really want to go with him, but I don't think I can afford to take the hit that uh, I took last time. So these guys are going to pile in a fight. They all pile in and attack except for one buddy here in the far back here. He's no fighting, but everyone else can fight because they are veterans of Galette. And they've done this song and dance before. Skull bugs, because you're a monster. It's a four up. Ooh, nope. didn't quite matter. All right, no skull bugs here. Never mind that. He's a grinning blade. This doesn't take away from the skull bugs. He can lead the skull bugs. Uh, so these are the attacks on them. No negative one to hit, so these are threes. And then no plus one to wound either, because we're not fighting over territory. We covet. We already have it. Worth the wound, though, with a rend. Might do something. Ooh, it's not a bad roll. That is six, seven, eight wounding hits. Five up. Boop. Decently got a four up normally. Not bad. Make quite a bit of them. Does he have a ward saver? No. He does not. All right, so you just take four-ish damage. Yep. I will be calling a wall with my uh, general over here, so my killer boss. Uh, so that allows me to pick two other units. To immediately fight with, essentially. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So the, well, like a fight first kind of scenario. Yeah, he fights and then two other things, they, and then they all fight one after the other. So yeah. what are the other two units fighting? Uh, so it has to be a unit within, wholly within 18. So I'm going to pick the Gut Rippers over here and the Marsh Crawler Trogoth. All right. All right, so we're going to start off with four attacks from his Jagged Bostica into the uh, Deathbringer. Exalted Deathbringer, debate. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm going to hit you on threes. Okay, good start. And no I sixes, need, though. That's ideal. And I need threes to wound you. Is that so two of them? Two wounds at minus one. So it's his finest hour. He's back to a five up. Okay, I didn't roll any four. Ooh, I rolled a six. So he's a do. He's got a. He's got a skull gouger. Whenever he rolls a six to save, you take D3 mortal wounds back. All right. He's like an impressive duelist. And then I, one does go through. Yeah, so. so it'll be flat two damage going into you. So I'll take my two over there so far. And then I will deal two to you. And that is, of course, all allocated afterwards, yeah. but yeah. And next I have the bone crushing fangs, which are going to hit on threes. Boop. Now, this guy doesn't have the venom encrusted stuff. No, his mount does not benefit from that. That's fair. Okay. And then wounding you on threes. Ooh. And these are going to be at minus two. Okay, so we have a six up save. Didn't make any of them, although defense wouldn't have mattered. Okay, how much damage are these each? These are two flat each. Who? Oh, this guy does a lot of damage. Oh, wow, that guy just crushed me with that hit moon with everything on the mount. I did not expect that. I got to roll really well with the ward save here. Oh, I, oh, I think I'm dead by one. Holy crap, he's got six <laughs> wounds, dude. He's got one wound. All right, then we have the other thing fighting, the, the Trigoth. So So he has four attacks that are going to hit on fours. Boop, 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 boop. Got a, one hit. This is the Trogoth itself or the little guys? It's the little guys. There's okay. no mount. Uh, <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. And then, oh, no, there is the mount. But anyway, uh, threes do not wound. All right. So we've survived the uh, the Hobgrots attacking, but the mount itself. The has. mount has four raking claws attacks oh. on. that hit on threes. No, those definitely all hit. To wound you on threes. Ah, no. 
Oh, random. Two wounds, and these are rend minus one. Fail both. And it's flat two. Yeah, he's gonna die. Ah, oh, crap. Okay, that's fine. He tried. Uh, he takes three damage. Ah, I should have attacked with him first, but it's a little more important to do damage over there, I think. So the he's gonna he's a character, so he gets to throw three murder attacks right back at your general. And your general takes a mortal wound. I did a total of three mortal wounds to him. It's a good thing you recovered that one, or else he would have been dead as yep. well. A lot of tight rolls there. Then you get to attack with them as part of the wall yep. still. And then they're gonna pile and attack uh, the skull crushers, right and that does give me a blood tithe point as well. So, uh, I'm swinging back here. Ideally, I'm looking for sixes here. Come on, baby, show me some sixes. That's a couple mortal wounds. And I need threes to hit you. Ah, uh, because of the weird, the yeah. weird Trogoth thing, yeah. You know what? That's that's not unfamiliar of this game so far. <laughs> that's definitely come up quite a few times. So two mortal wounds, and then these are forced to wound. Yeah. Uh, two saves. Two ups! Oh, I take three damage. Who's left on the... Ooh, at this point, the musician, I guess, because we're there. And that is the wah, the cool boy wah. And that's all, that's all attacked over there, so logic says I should go and fight over here, I suppose. Oh, I should have known you're probably gonna. Oh, I guess if they already, if he fought, then he wouldn't have bothered going over there. So I will go with these two, and they are just going to attack. Uh, Gobsprack. Gobsprack. The guy with axes has three attacks, uh, hitting on. You have to do your bug, uh, the skull bug thing. Oh no, he's not skull bug. He doesn't get it. Uh, Could potentially be a skull bug. Just don't roll all four, and I don't care. Oh, there we go. Don't have to worry about it. All right, so these all hit, and then these wound on threes because we get plus one wound, and uh, rend one, three saves. A six up. Because we're fighting for an objective we don't control. Okay. One damage. And a six up ward. Nice. Go. Take your damage. We got the Gore Glaive, which can go on the champion now, I believe. I still don't play it that way yet. Just want to figure it out for now. It's the difference of just one attack. Uh, they miss with these two. Uh, and I don't get a plus one to hit, so... That's a wound, though. A rend of one or two. One of, the, one of them. I'll figure it out in a second. Six up. Nope. And, and it is two damage. Two damage. And one damage because yeah. of the ward. Six remaining wounds there. That's my attack finish. You get to go with pretty much just this guy over here. Right. Yeah. yeah. And we got four attacks with his snatch a stick because he doesn't get hurt really. So we're hitting on threes. Sixes are good. No sixes. Nope. And I need threes to wound. We're looking at two wounds at minus one. Minus one. Make, ooh, make two saves. And you take, these are the Gorfis, so you take two more wounds back. You have four remaining wounds. And I have four attacks because I'm... Wounded. Yeah, loses a couple attacks there. So threes. Ooh, mor mortals. Nice. And then the one hits. And it wounds. Yep. And I do not make my save, so that's a total of five damage, I think, because of the mortals. Five wounds. damage, yeah. Yeah. A so big it's, bite. Yeah, so it's one attack. You rolled a six last time. Oh, that's a miss. <laughs> that misses. All right. And then I have the thrashing tail, which I need a three to hit. Two hits. To hit. And I need a four to wound now. One two. wound. And this is at minus two. We'll fail that as well. Two damage? Two damage. So a total of seven. So we're going to lose, uh, it's two, four, six, and uh, seven. So Boom. Drive. Those guys are going to murder you right back, and you're going to take another mortal wound. You'll have three remaining. Brings us to the last little, well, that's not true. That's not the last fight. You, right. get, to fight, you get to fight with those guys there. Yeah. I'm just going to get this out of the way. Uh, this guy is going to pile backwards, staying just as close to that unit. This guy is going to get on in there, and so will this guy. Just push through, boys. They do a third skull bug on a six. No. Uh, and then Thomas is going to all out defense against that. Uh, these are hitting on threes now because uh, we are not skull bugged. And twos because we're still fighting for that objective. Just trying to grind through it. So we have uh, four, six wounds because of rent two. The six up save because of all the defense. Yeah. Forgot about that. Just talked about it. Uh, you make one. So that's five wounds so far. And then we have three attacks from the hooves on twos because of a plus one to hit, and we're fighting for an objective we don't control, so we get plus one to wound as well. So we have six wounds, no rend. You have a four up against that. Six wounds, no rend, four up. Oh, no damage. Nice, good all the defense. We just got the five damage in there, and then you get to fight with them. They they charge, so they can pile in as well, if they want to. And then... All right, so I'm looking here for... These are all the attacks into yeah. these guys. Oh, they're dead! I don't even have to worry, the mortal wounds kill him. Bless. Uh, I appreciate rules like that for that reason. <laughs> We're going to do all the murder strikes into the big guy, though, to try and do some extra damage to him. All right. It'll take nothing. Nice. Big, and that's a blood tithe point. I'm at nine. There's no cap on blood tithe points now, which is nice. All right, and then because they did pile in, they do drag this guy into combat, which makes me wonder. I am going to try and get some damage in on, because he is reach of two. So if we pile in directly this way, we'll go... Getting close to them, but we're gonna attack Gobsprack. All right, use Gobsprack for Skullbugs. Skullbugs! Oh, 
odd. It worked out odd. Doesn't matter who you did it on, I guess. Four attacks. Hitting on fours now because of skull bugs. And then twos to wound because we're fighting near the objective. Right. So that's uh, three at red one. Three at red one, so I have a six up. Two damage each, so that's four damage on him. He's got destiny though. Mm. Six up ward save. He takes three damage. All right, so he's got three, three left. left. Okay, okay. That'll bring it right to battle shock. Neither one of us have command points, so you gotta do yours. Yeah. Rolling them. So I lost two guys here. I think just two-ish, yeah. Seven? Seven, I will fail that. But only one guy runs. Yeah, because so yeah, he the, lived, that was big, because he's within three of them. Yeah. Uh, everything is okay over here. I lost a couple guys there, but they're okay. And that's about it for battle shock. Yeah. As for scoring, you got eye for an eye. Absolutely yeah. you did. Because uh, you killed my Exalted Deathbringer. I'm at nine blood tithe points right now. Yep. You control the middle and your home objective. I control this one still. Yep. And no champions on that one. So that means you get four points again as we go into my turn three. All right, so you pulled ahead there with the uh, the extra priority. I'm going to see if I can't get ahead as well. Generals are still alive, so we're both at one command point. Battle tactics, I'll go eye for an eye, mostly for simplicity. <laughs> but it should be able to kill something. And if I don't, well, that's bad news bears for me. And then everything else, I don't think I need to recover. So I'm going to go leadership because I could probably use a command point. Not my totem, I guess, because my general is over here. So yeah, I'll put on my totem. I'm going to Le leadership oh. as well. Do you want to try and heal him or just uh, <sighs> take the command point? Oh, I guess we're both at one command point, so leadership's also really good. Yeah, I'm going to go for leadership. Four up. You got it. So you'll have an extra command point over there. My little icon ain't going to matter as much. So we're going to go for some prayers here. Uh, I don't need the extra blood tithe points, so I guess we can go with the curse. Uh, we'll go blood boil first on a four up. Not re-rollable. Ooh, we got it. That's D6 mortal wounds. We're definitely just going to kill that general. Oh, really want to kill him, but we're going to go for your general over there. He's going to suffer five mortal wounds. And he, he eventually dies to boiling blood, and we'll get a blood tithe point. And the second prayer on our high priest of corn is going to be for bronzed flesh. So we're going to make the skin a little bit thicker, probably on our one random little uh, skull grinder there. So plus one save to the skull grinder. Then our ritualist is going to invoke a hex, maybe? That sounds like something kind of fun, I suppose. That got us to 10 blood tithe points, even though there's a strictly better things to use on the blood tithe table. For you, Thomas, I'll summon a bloodthirster. I want to be the first guy to use go. it again. There so. we go. Fine. I will put a bloodthirster on this table for you. I better make this charge, though. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and blood hex. We'll try to, at least. Got it. Minus one to their attacks. All right. I would like to do uh, a few things, uh, or at least one thing on the blood tide table right now. It would be really clutch, but I'm going to summon a bloodthirster instead for you. For you. Okay, so we're going to go right to movement. There's bloodthirst at the end of the movement phase. Cool. And both of our characters get involved over here. Keep the skull crushers in combat over there. All of this is going to stay. I don't care about the, the reavers. Yeah, we'll bring the reavers in too. Come up and around because they're going for the big dumb vulture in the middle. I think the skull grinder wants to grind skulls around here. So we're just going to ignore the weird shooting bunker you have. We'll just go right there. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I believe we're on to charging. We're going to start. Oh, wait. Nope. Summon a bloodthirster. And from the skull altar of corn comes the bloodthirster of unfettered fury. So there's three of them. Unfettered Fury is probably the best summoning one if you want consistency because it could choose the unit at the start of the charge phase to charge 3d6 and go the full 18. So you summon him more than nine away, boom, he just charges 3d6, gets in there immediately. Uh, and Sensei Rage is the big two-handed axe guy who does like crap ton of damage around him when he's in prolonged combat, so he's like a good starting build one. And then the Wrath of Corn is like a good like bloodthirster leader because he like gives out free command points and everything. So like one's a commander, one's like a good charger, and one's a good like prolonged kind of sustained combat one. This is the guy who you want to charge with. So you summon this guy if you want the consistency. Summon him there. We're going to go into shooting. He does have, he, his whip is 8-inch range, so I can't use it, but he does have a shooting attack. And then uh, we're right on to charging. So he is going to go ahead and charge. Oh, he's going to beckon the hunt. So I pick a unit uh, within range. Uh, he's going to pick himself. It's any Blades of Corn unit, not just demonic or immortal. And uh, they get to charge up to 3d6 inches. This is, he came literally all the way from Corn's realm to get that dummy. So uh, we've beckoned the hunt. He's going to charge. Uh, okay, well, he goes up to... Uh, look, I got on two dice and then plus four more. <laughs> so he'll go 13 inches. <laughs> Can't be mad about this. This is what I wanted. I, I helped Boom. you. F right there. We'll go half an inch to them, but he's got the reach to attack this way yep. if I need it. Then uh, let's go with the skull grinder. He's going to charge. 11. Okay. I'm going to unleash hell. I'm going to attempt you. No, you don't want to unleash hell? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. yeah, he won't be able to do the order because he's a little too far away, so they'll suffer the negative one to hit, which would be five. Yeah. But that's kind of all you really want for the mortal wounds. Yeah. So it's kind of tough, but no Unleash Hell. And then we're going to charge in 
this guy here. We're not within three of them, so they can still do it, but we are within... Well, I guess they wouldn't be able to do it. I'm not within three, but I could pile into them because I'm charging over there. Yep. This, anyways, that's this dummy's charge. He's going to go right there. And then our other ritualist is going to charge. Oh, yeah, she'll make it in right there. They're all charging. They're stuck in combat, and uh, they're going to charge as well. Oh. <laughs> What's going on? They still have their stupid guy blowing a horn. He hasn't stopped. It's been a long time, dude. That's a good note. Uh, they'll go 13 inches that way. That's uh, how they end up with their charge. And then uh, we're on to the end of the... So I got to do Monsters Rampages. I got one. I want to roar at him. I don't think it's going to do much. I'm just going to step on some cool boys, I guess. Stop, 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 stop. Step, step, step. It's going to step on uh, one of them. <laughs> one is squish. Blech. And then you have uh, two of them to do, actually. So you got one on Scumdreck, and you got one on gro 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 Gobsprack. Uh, I'm going to go for the roar on Gobstrack. All right, hit a, hit a three up. Boom. You get a no. one. Nope. And then a stomp on this guy, yeah. yes, on a two. You get a D3 mortal wounds. Oh, kills two of them. Finishes you off, and we'll finish you off as well. Okay, I see what's up. An actual fighting. Well, actually, that's quite the difficult decision, I would say. I kind of want to go first over here, so I think, I think I'm think i going to do just that, because I don't... Mm, them dying alone could kill them. In fact, that should kill them, because he has no ward save. Eh? So no. them dying and rolling saves should kill him. So I'm going to fight first with the Bloodthirster. One more thing I did want to do on this turn is I'm going to unleash the Rage of Corn. So the Blood Secrator, the Battle Standard Bear, has a once-per-game ability now. Uh, where he plants the banner and leases the uh, the energies of it, and all blades of corn is holy with. Actually, everywhere on the table gets plus one attack. So I do a once per combat phase, like one combat phase in the whole game. So everything on the table that's mine gets an extra attack. So we got the. He's in the yeah skull bugs. Boop. Ooh. Uh, yeah, it happens. That should work. Yeah, it should yeah. work. Yep. So he is gonna all out attack anyways, just to get. The, he's gonna have the most bang for his buck, I suspect. He's gonna have nine attacks with that axe of corn there. I gotta figure out how I want to do this. Roll skull bugs for them too, because I don't know how it works, but I'm gonna put attacks into both of them. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah. so it doesn't matter. They're both negative one to hit. Easy enough. So with his nine attacks, because he's got eight normally, I wanna put three into dummy there and the other six into the uh, the uh, gut ripper. So we'll yep. do the three first. Sure. So we are plus one to hit, minus one to hit, so we hit on the five. And then we wound on the three as well. Uh, with a rent of probably two. I roll anyways, and I'll double check. No, nope, definitely not a three. So it'll do D3 damage. Three damage, which have a six up ward save. All right, oh. he died. One hit gets him. Nice. I'll take it. I get a blood tie point. Uh, then this guy here is going to attack those gut rippers on, well, I think threes. And then definitely, definitely those all wound. I'm going to check the rent now, I guess. I'll, be, yeah. I'll stop being lazy. And two, unless you want all the defense it. Uh... Give you a six up, and you won't have that anywhere else. Uh, you know what? Just to be an annoy annoyance, I'm gonna do that. All right, nice, nice, nice. All right, cool. So six ups, you make one. one. So that's three d3 damage. So he's gonna crush six, uh, three of them. Three. He's cut up three of them right there, yep. and that's it. He's done. But he killed big guy and three of them, and he made a charge. Next. Oh, Scumdrex's so gonna choose his own fate over here. Yeah. Okay. So he's pretty beat up, but we'll see if he <laughs> can do anything. And you, you stepped on them. Yeah. I have no command points left, so uh, bring it on. Do not degrade, hitting on threes. Yeah, he's... <laughs> All right. It's a good thing they're not Wrathmongers. You'd yep. be dead. And wounding on three. Okay. okay. So that's how it's going to be. Classic Thomas, man. <laughs> three wounds left. I only have three attacks on the Grasping Talons, which... <laughs> well, that's a probably a hit. And that will wound at a minus one. Minus one. Uh, we're okay. We have a three up normally. Bite, I'm hitting you on a three. No six, eh? I'm wounding you on a two. <sighs> All right. Scum trick. What are you doing? It's just like you started so high and then you just been yep. down the whole time. Uh, I blew out all on the steam, so I have two hits with the thrashing tail. Yep. The wound, I need a five plus. Yeah, because it's gotten a lot worse. One at minus two. Uh, we save. We're three up normally. All right. So you did. No damage. Yeah. After that impressive show, thank you for that, by the way. Everyone You're, at home is uh, Everyone at home applause. enjoy this because <laughs> at my misery, I'm here to please in that way. <laughs> Pretty rough. We're going to go to our Realmscape Ritualist. She's going to pull out her Sacrificial Dagger. Yep. Uh, and then she gets one attack normally, but she does get plus one for the banner. So I'm going to roll two dice and actually remember that. We do have a miss. And then this wound's on. I should be at two because I don't control this yet. Right. I could, you still control it. So I do wound on that. It's rent of one, I think. So I have a six up. 
Which is or actually, I, ooh. It's rent two. Yeah, so ignore that. You would have had a six up because of all the defense. And this is uh, this is where her dagger's a little weird. So it's Ren two and it's D6 damage. So she, she stabs you with cannonballs. She has the exact same profile as a Great Sky Cannon. Okay. On her ritual dagger. <laughs> so she's going to deal. All right. She's going to kill one guy so bad, three of them fall over dead. <laughs> one guy's left. So There's one guy left? Yeah. Her <gasps> dagger goes all right. And it's weird. I'm not too sure. Uh, you get to pick now. Uh, much left, and my all my hope died over there. So I'm going to go with my gut rippers over here and see if they can do anything. Okay. I got the skull bugs on her attacks, but I rolled a six to hit, so it shouldn't matter. Five of them remaining. Hitting on threes, looking for sixes. <laughs> this is a weird troll still yeah. alive, yeah. One mortal wound, not bad. That's going to wound this guy down yep. to one. And then forced to wound. Forced to wound. That is four. Two up saves. That does finish one off. Uh, and then wound another down to four. That'll be the banner berry. Might as well keep the champion. And then your attack is done, so does he have a murderous strike back at you? He does not, and uh, he is... Well, I suppose the next best thing is going to be from uh, over here. General, the High Priest of Corn, is going to try and finish off that uh, cruel boy. Okay, so we have four attacks with his bloodbathed axe now because of the plus one. So we yep. Oh, do us... You know what? These all hit even with skull bugs. Yeah. Easy enough, I suppose. Uh, three wounds at rend of one, but you have all the defense on you. Boom, 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 boom. So you're looking at five up. So one's going to get through, and I believe it does two damage. So it just kills that guy. Yep. Another blood tie point. And if it doesn't do two damage, well, there's the three it does on a D3. <laughs> okay, your pick. Uh, I don't think... No, I, I don't have <gasps> anything else. Me? All right, yeah. I'm going to go with these guys over here. Yep. Three attacks on the Gorglave because of the banner. I technically cheated last time, rolled through with it uh, last time, but it didn't really hit, so it didn't matter. Uh, Got to do skull bugs. Oh, actually, no, he doesn't get it. He's a, it's a uh, war boss scum drag. Yeah. Uh, so we got two hits. And uh, a pair of wounds as well. I ran to one. That was a four, sorry. Uh, Random one. Should be a five up or yeah, a four. Five up. Oh, you make both. And these guys go. Uh, it's going to be three attacks each for the rest of them. They're veterans, so I don't have to pile them in. And then all of their attacks. Hitting on three. Yep, threes to hit. And I control the objective, so I do not get plus one wound. So we're looking at fours to wound with the rest of their attacks. That is going to be a total of six saves at run one. All right. I'll, I'll reroll that yeah. one. That's a drop die. So eight, fives. Oh, he dies. Oh, Three fails. <laughs> oh, I'm not surprised. I actually expected him to kill all of them and then for them to murder strike back. Yeah. That's what I was hoping, but it turns out he just didn't do much, sadly. He's sometimes good, sometimes he's bad. He did pretty well up until then. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give him that. He was me. somewhat of an MVP. Yeah. Somewhat. And then since you have nothing else to really go with, uh, this guy did charge. Yeah. He, he's going to pile in a fight, and then you'll be able to fight back with these guys after he's done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That fourth attack is of the banner. Threes to hit. And then threes to wound. At rend of one. So I don't think they have much of a save. No, I think it's actually a six up, so... He does go six damage in total. Yeah, I think he crushes three of them within a whirlwind of rage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'll take these three. Boom, boom, boom. And then you get to pile in and fight back with them. So Boop. they have two attacks each. With their little, like, hitting on fours. Nasty knives. But actually, fives will still cause mortal wounds. Yep. Uh, one so mortal wound. So that'll be, uh, yeah, one mortal wound you here. Force to wound here. Two of them. I will take maybe, there's no rend, right? No. He does have plus one to a save, but this definitely fails. He has a four up base, so he does fail that as well. So he's got three remaining wounds. And then uh, I get to go with the Mighty Skull Crushers over here. I gotta do a Skull Bug. Do a Skull Bug roll for me. They've been consistent most of the game. No. no. Fours to hit. Ooh, that is a, uh, how about one miss? Wow. <laughs> That's threes to wound no save. <laughs> so he kills two of them. And then uh, we have the Mount who attacks afterwards with six attacks. Right? Yeah. We're down threes and three. Uh, still fighting for that objective. We don't control so uh, four or more. Ran nothing. Five ups. And I will kill one more and wound another. Yep. So we killed. That's not bad. We killed quite a bit of them. Yeah, but they're definitely going to run now. Yeah, they don't have the uh, boss nearby. His, yeah. his blood boiled and he died. <laughs> that's why. That's why. That's what you get when you mess with corn. That's battle a shock here. Yeah, effectively a battle shock on them. Yeah, they're going to run. Uh, two, they're probably sticking around, but yeah. And with that two, they're actually probably sticking around. But I get the objective there. And uh, they lost three. They could yeah. also fail. You rolled a four, a seven. Seven, and their bravery is five. Even six with the banner. Oh, with the banner is yeah. five? No, with the banner would be six. So one runs then. Yeah. Okay. So Just keep the banner then. Yep. Boop. And uh, that is it. I lost a couple dudes over there. I don't think they can run. I rolled a three and lost uh, two or three. So they're okay. I know they're brave seven, I believe. And this is all... Uh, 
That's it. That's done. Yeah. I get my eye for an eye, and I control all of the objectives now. Yep. Me. Priority roll for the fourth round? I, I think <laughs> at this point, it's clear um, that you have it. Like, there's, it's just going to be difficult for me to cap that objective in the, your objective there. Yeah. yeah. That, that's obviously going to score more points, so you holding mine right now gets you really ahead. Oh, that does give me two points. That's right. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I forgot about that. And uh, there's no way... You can deal with the Bloodthirster. You could probably bring it down with the two. You want to do, you, let's do one volley. Shot. I want to see those guys do one volley. Okay. Let's see if we get the priority. You got a couple hits here. Maybe two. Oh, two hits. Nice. Two hits. Uh, do they wound? Ba -ba 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 -ba. And they're, they wound. A couple wounds. And then I do my saves. What's the rend on that attack? Uh, it's minus two. I guess I would have all of defense and made one of them. So one goes through. It's damn. Uh, then you roll. Oh, quite a bit, actually. Yeah. This is going to be 16 dice. Thomas is going to roll. And every five up will increase the damage of the shot by one. Because he's at currently two. It always starts at two, though. So it's two plus the amount of fives. So it'd be one. Oh, it's three damage. All right, never mind. That was, lack, that was lackluster. <laughs> you do three. All right, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> okay, that's what I mostly wanted to see. Yeah. I'm also curious about the priority roll. I would have had a four. Yeah. Okay, you would have you would have kept priority. Probably done just that. Yeah. And then that's all stuck up over there. Yeah. I think realistically you could win that back over time, but then you would fall behind over here exactly. and, on, and on battle tactics. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Like even with one bolt boy left, how much am I going to do with him? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we've, we've seen me fail multiple magic spell tests, so that's not going to happen. I wish you know you... Just let's go with the track record of this game, okay? It's not like statistics or anything. Just go track record. He has not done much besides give a poison out, yeah. and that's it. Like, not ideal. I know yeah. the uh, the score the score is pretty close right now. It's actually tied. I think almost identical. Uh, almost ideal. Uh, almost exactly. Sorry, that's right. what I'm trying to. Yeah, look for. but I just think at yeah. the end of my turn, there's no way I'm scoring anything for the holding any of the objectives. And realistically, the rest of the battle report recorded would be I stand here and pass my turn. Yeah. So there's not much action left. Yeah. We got to see the cool things. Uh, where the my favorite part of the game was that hero duel over there at the end. Yeah. Where I had one wound left, and then you you called the wa though, yeah. and then you finished him off. I like that. That was my favorite part. Yeah. Uh, your your bloodthirsts are coming in as a wrecking ball there, and just clearing everything up the way he did that i like that he got this guy got probably out of all three of the bloodthirsters this guy got way 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 better so his land rebels he has an aura of negative one to hit so when he makes that charge he just gives all enemies nearby him negative one to hit because he disrupts the land and makes it unstable and it's hard to uh, keep your footing and then after combat anyone under the land that he's augmenting just takes more wounds on a four up as well as it like starts to eat them up and everything he's just like a like a, a natural disaster moving around the battlefield. Yeah. He he has gotten quite a nice, uh, yeah. and, and more wounds as well, putting put him at 16 wounds, however. And don't forget that paired with this wonderful battle report that you just enjoyed, in the vault, there is another one. That's right, Nick and I play Chaos on Chaos, the Hedon Knights of Slanesh versus the Slaves to Darkness. There will be much depravity and much blood for the Blood God. Of course, the link is down below. There's a trial. You can become a YouTube member to check out all the other cool content that we make here at Mini Wargaming. Enjoy the post game. 330 points. All the, all the greater demons are quite expensive now, but they're quite good too. He, so paying 10 to summon him feels pretty good actually. He's, he's only like 40 points more than Gobsprack, and he does a, he did a lot more in one turn that he showed up than Gobsprack did in the three turns he's played. Go, Gobsprack is he, he's. He's like a weird, like, he, he's definitely got good combat stats on the yeah. bird, but he's got, like, a bad save. That's it. Yeah. And, like, he doesn't want to do prolonged combat. Yeah, yeah. and against other magic, he's really good. Yeah, he's super 3D, good. Yeah. Because of his 3d6 denies and stuff corn, like though. that. And unbound. Yeah. But I played against a melee-based corn army, which obviously you don't <laughs> have any spells. So, <laughs> to no surprise there, yeah. right? So what did you think about the massive horde of my army just like running at you? I did not, like, to be honest, I did not expect a horde corn army. Like, that surprised me. And I'm looking at my cool boys, which look a lot more elite. And I was just like, yeah, this is, it was an uphill battle. But I had fun. Um, you, should, you, you see how big my dead pile is on the yeah. side table? It's like nuts. It's like a catastrophe. I don't even. I got a lot of junk over there. I don't want to show you guys, but like, there's just piles of bodies yeah. on the left. I was more surprised my gut rip has lasted as long. As I know. You, that that kill a boss rule is quite good though. I had my whole plan wrapped around like hammering them and then making them fail a battle shock check high enough to make a few more guys run away. Yeah. 
but the, you just you just stop. You're like, nope, one guy runs, that's it. Yeah. I'm like, oh damn, that makes my plan a hell of a lot more difficult. Because I wanted the goal for them. I I still like them in the list of my skull crushers. The goal is for them to come up the side and have this guy kind of nearby, and then he helps them come back on fours. Yeah. Them coming back on fours, and they have like these are they have great staying power, so they're great at hitting a side and eventually winning a long grind to get there. It's 400 points, so it's kind of expensive, but you could probably do it with three under certain circumstances. I was impressed with everything. I like how everything. I love this new Blades of Corn book. Not too sold on the heroes yet because I haven't had a really good opportunity to use them. Yeah. That one guy got in a cool fight but didn't really get to show it too much. And they kind of abandoned my heroes in the middle to do their own. They did great at the end. Yeah. Sure, they cleaned up and everything, but uh, the priests are really good because priests are generally really good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the skull grinder guy is just a dude who swings a hammer, and the other guy is an ex- uh, just another. I'm not huge like. How many points is a skull grinder? So both of them, ninety. Ninety. So those two. They're like it's like it's tough to say because like I could easily just drop both of them and get ten more blood warriors. In yeah. The list. They don't aug- They don't really do anything synergistically for the list other than being heroes who kind of like to fight. Right. Right. So I'm not too sure what they do. But, but yeah. yeah, maybe another ten, try and try the list again. Just take them out and try the Blood Warriors and see how that works for you. So you have probably right. more holding power on objectives and stuff like that. These guys are quite good now. In yeah. fact, everything in the Blades of Court book is very playable, very fun. And it's not like over the top, like, oh, new book, yeah. of course. Yeah, It's just like their old rules got brought in line. They added yeah. the White Dwarf stuff, changed it up a little your, bit. Your one Blood Tithe point where you did your move Super at the end powerful. of my yeah. command phase or whatever. Yeah. That was that, that's a gotcha moment, which you got. You, you have to let your opponent know every single time it pops up because they yeah. might have a plan. It's like, okay, I'm gonna say this is like you know one of your big guys. Like I'm gonna buff him up with Mystic Shield. I'm gonna give him this ability, and then I'm gonna activate his once per game artifact of power. And it's like, okay, I'm gonna go on the move phase. One second. Uh, I move this one Reaver in combat with him for one blood type point. Now you can't do anything. Yeah, this day. <laughs> it's just so uh, that that's that's very powerful. Th- that for one blood type point is probably the most powerful thing in the book. Both yeah. I think in 40k and AOS free movement. Oh, outside the, outside yeah. of phases is super powerful. Well, like, movement is how you win these games, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Like being able to, when I moved Scumdrek because of the spells and that. Like it's an ex, it's that an extra it's eight inch move each time. You yeah. know, like. Get it's, him in combat earlier. Get yeah. him out of sticky situations. Yeah. Because if you didn't get that spell off, he would have got hit by the Reavers, and he would have never hit these guys. Exactly. And he would have been stuck fighting over there. Then I could have countercharged with them. Granted, he kind of didn't do super well, so it worked out well for me. Yeah. But that could, like could have been a exactly. thing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But overall, like it was a fun game. Uh, thank you for walking me through some stuff. And uh, yeah. That was outstanding. Yeah, that was, yeah. I, I was. I had a lot of fun. With the, this is the first like big Blades of Corn list I played, so I'm happy with everything how it worked out. Yeah, I liked everything I added. The only thing I'm a little off about is like the two characters there, but whatever. It's not like they make or break the list. Yeah, yeah it was just also at the end of my first turn, I was like, oh god, what what's gonna happen now? Like I yeah. didn't score any points, thinking like my my artillery and and bolt boys were gonna do anything, but it picked you know, up. It picked yeah, up. Yeah, like that's it. So I had a lot of fun. And uh, I hope you guys did, too. I hope so, too. So leave some feedback down below. Things we may have forgotten here and there, little things. And uh, I'll keep it noted, keep it up, uh, locked away up top of here for the next time I play Blades of Corn. Because there are going to be more Blades of Corn games to come, but I got a lot of other things I got to play coming out, too. So I got, I got hammered by, like, four of my main books I play all coming at the same time. So my focus is kind of all over the place. But uh, it'll, it'll, like, whatever. It'll even out eventually. Yeah. I'll, I'll get a better pace going with all the books. So uh, you probably want to see a lot of things from Blades of Corn, but I got other things to focus on for now, too. So you'll get what you get, I suppose, for now. And then uh, it'll eventually all come out yeah. at one time. So thanks again for the game, Thomas. It's my pleasure. We'll play again soon because we've yes. got you here all week. And, uh, and to everyone watching from home, you know, happy wargaming.